the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln, Secretary of State, bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They're the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, your year-round professional property maintenance company, providing services such as weekly lawn maintenance, driveway sweeping, snow and ice management, and tons more. Get your free estimate today at lawnproak.com. Anchortown Dogs, located at 4th Avenue across from the old 4th Avenue Theater. Look for the blue and gold umbrella. From reindeer dogs to bomb euros, they've got you covered. Anchortown Dogs, your local gourmet hot dog and sausage cart. Menegato's Accounting, locally owned and operated advisory and tax accounting solutions. Passion, experience, diligence. Learn more at menegatosaccounting.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off Arctic and 58th. Handcrafted Alaskan made cider. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Check them out at doubleshovelcider.com. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation. Find their products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce carts, and more at the Treehouse AK and other dispensaries around the state. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, your all-in-one cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. Marijuana has intoxicating effects that may be habit forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with the consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older, keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Another one. There it is. Boo, boo. There it is. The twofer. The twofer. Uh, welcome to uh, another Alaska Wild Project podcast, episode number 25. Um, today we are sitting with our good buddy, Chad Arntz. We are going to talk sheep hunting. Um, Chad, thanks for coming, first of all. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate welcome, it. Chad. Yes. Um, Chad's Instagram is at mountain.div, mtn.div for Mountain Division. Mm. So check him out on Instagram, mtn mtn.div mountain div dude chad's a bad mofo bad okay. mofo straight up my wife calls straight him up. hot chad hot chad hot chad, hot chad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chad. i could see why he's a good looking dude <laughs> yeah yeah he's no, an old man. dude now <laughs> yeah so I, i'm out there with this dude for a couple of days and i'm finally like man i want to know how old he is how do i chad, ask how old are you man he tells me and i'm like for real I'm like, damn, bro, you're doing good. Not to mention, he's just an animal on the mountain. So, you're doing something right, man. Oh, I'm just trying to stay in the game, like I told you. Hell yeah. Well, what did you say? Uh, old man quoted it, or somebody quoted on another podcast. He's like, just a diesel leaking a little oil, right? Oh, like, yeah. I just heard this expression <laughs> on a hockey thing. And he was like, oh, yeah, man, that guy out there, he's leaking oil. I was like, Ooh, I like oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Still running strong, blowing a little blue smoke, yeah. but leaking oil, but still doing it. The pistons are still running. <laughs> yeah. Used to be a two stroke diesel. <laughs> slow and just loud <laughs> uh well thank you to everyone oh, that uh was checking out our gear review ones um everyone that subscribed on our youtube channel if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do that at alaska wild project is the youtube channel 
Um, we got a lot of good hits on the last gear review on the backpack one, mm -hmm. um, on the Bino one before that. Uh, we do want to do some other ones. We're going to do like an in reach uh, spot, you know, communications one, a stove one. Mm -hmm. We're going to pretty much go down the line of, of all the stuff that we use here and there and plug them in. Yeah. Especially because like we're, we're, we're in the middle of the season, dude. We're hunting. We're, we're, we all just got back from separate oh, trips. Yeah. And we're trying to just keep this consistency going for the listeners and the audience. Um, so thank you for those people that maybe that wasn't quite your your deal or your thing, but yeah. you still hung in there. I mean, the numbers didn't dip or anything like yeah. that. Actually, they kind of increased. So yeah, that's there really are some cool. real cool stories and stuff that go on, along with them. You know what one I'd like to do is like I'd like to find a good pair of like muck kind of boots that mm. you can do like big climbs in still you know it's like the none of the yes. must kind of boots work for me yet i still roll with extra toughs because i haven't found another one that i liked yeah but man if we could go test a bunch of those that would be awesome yeah, yeah. and you like the muck boots with the um like the vibram sole oh mm -hmm. right yeah. you know what i'm saying or something like yeah. that it's got ankle they're support. coming with new stuff i've seen a new one oh, man what was the company i want to say it was muck that yeah. like had like a beefier sole and it had like an extension that went up from the from the top of the boot up above your knees that would cinch. Oh, nice! Mm. So like if you're gonna actually cross something, you can like cinch it up and get minimum water. I mean, yeah. it'll probably still leak a little bit, but you can cinch it pretty tight. Right. Instead mm. of like doing like you know the duct tape thing or yeah yeah whatever yeah. you know the gaiters and stuff like that are okay, but. That was I thought that was a pretty cool. You should look it up actually, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, it was La a new one that had like a little cinch on it. Lacrosse has some pretty good boots like that style. Yeah, Those extra toughs have like no support. Right, right. They're like ankle yep. rollers. Yep. But lacrosse makes some like I think it's well, they have one that's called like I think it's called the Alpha Burley. Uh huh. And it's more like it's like heavy insulation. Yeah, so it the looks thing like a pretty the, built boot like tread. Yeah, they, they have really good tread and they're really good material. What I didn't like, I tried lacrosse's my last set of boots is that their insulation is like that thin slit where that like once that gets wet dude it's just like just they stays toast. soaked yeah. whereas like this the, cold. the muck boot even if it gets wet it's like that i don't know what it is it's are like neoprene like right? a neoprene yeah. so even so with wet that like, warmth, yeah. yeah that was the only down because i really noticed it on those back-to-back -back, um winter caribou hunts oh yeah because I, I would rock those, and one year had the mucks, and I was good. And the next year, I was like, oh, I'm going to get these lacrosses. They look badass. Mm -hmm. But it was that thin slit. And yeah. then once that kind of got a little bit of sweat oh, in yeah. there and mm. then, like, froze, it right, was just, like, frozen. The All the toes fell off. They got black. Yeah. yeah. I'd like one that kind of. call me Daniel Eight Toes now. Buckles down, or you can cinch on top of your foot because my, my feet are different sizes. So I'm always have to, having to buy a pair of boots that, and they're different sizes because of muscle atrophy, not length. And so. I'm having to buy in between sizes all the time. Mm. And if I could get something that I can cinch down, like almost like lay style or like ratchets, like you I need more like a pack boot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, but, but for like muck style. Yeah. Like, uh, I think like Schnee's makes some really good pack mm. boots like that. They're like taller. Yeah. But they got like lace up. They're kind of like a, like a way better Sorel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. think that company makes some pretty good. I think Renella is really into those. Schnells, yeah, I think they're yeah, like he out of Idaho or something. Yeah, so Schnells. Like, I, I thought Schnees is an actual Schnees, boot Schnees, brand, Schnees. or is it a store? They're a store, but they uh, make, make their, their own, own brand. boot. Okay. Or they, I think they might have their boot made in Italy, but it's like their, their design. Their thing. And okay, but it's a store, up, too. Right? Yeah, Schnees. I think it's two yeah, E's. Well, yeah, it was a... Yeah. S-C-H-N-E-E-S. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen uh, <clears throat> Mediator podcast... Uh, in the show, he he uh, promotes. I'm pretty sure he rocks the shit out of those. The schnees. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, schnee boots. Let me see. Oh yeah. Oh, with the yeah, little tie. A lot of different. That's exactly what I need. Yeah, those Mon Timberlands are pretty sick. Montana Montana boots. Oh wow, so that's nice. Kind of cool. Yeah, yeah that's dude. the pack yeah. boot style. So we're looking at the Never Settle. Is that the name of the boot? Oh no, they're probably oh, just cool. showing their whole line. I bet you that dude in the sheep was in something like that. Got it. Okay. I don't think he was wearing a pack boot. If he was, he's got way better ankles than me. Anyway, Schnee's good stuff. I haven't really looked yeah. into them too much. Yeah. I wonder if they sell any of their stuff in any of the stores up here, like Red I don't, Wing. I don't or think so. I've I've never uh, seen any Schnee's. Bozeman, Montana. Oh. Schnee, send us a couple of the size tens. Yeah, sure. And we'll, uh, that give looks you the like a gangster, like old school. 
Yeah, that's fancy. That looks like you can go to a show with that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Don't even need gators. Oh, you just definitely go to a show in Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to show up to the club with those, with the yeah. club shirt, the bedazzled jeans? Yeah. It's the skull shirt, skull bedazzled. <laughs> yeah, those look like bad, oh, bad man. boots. Yeah, that's like perfect for what I'm looking for. The Hunter 2, yeah, mm -hmm. 13 inch. Yeah, I've always like, there's this boot that I want that, that this is the scenario that would just be the ultimate, is when you got like your, your buddy drops you off on shore <coughs> or you take a dinghy out in the sound or, or southeast. Even Kodiak, I'm sure you could even get into bays where you can probably get in a Zodiac or something and mm -hmm. cruise around. Yeah, totally. And be able to jump off, and there's, you know, 18 inches of water or <clears throat> 12 inches of water. You got to jump out. And then now you're going to hike, like, four miles up into the backcountry. You might walk through creeks, wet moss, like, flooded, uh, flat Swamp yep, areas yep. that are like almost like a pond. The muskegs. Mm -hmm. Muskegs. And then, you know, but you still need ankle support and, yeah. and all the stuff of like a good hill boot, mountain boot, backpack boot. And then you can come back down and then like still walk, you know, four or five feet out in the, the surf, you know, the, the small, you know, surf or whatever on an incoming tide or whatever. And so totally. jump on the bow, like, you know, and have that. Yeah. Because the la lacrosse knee high, you know, gives you that. But then you go hiking around all day in that. And your feet are burning. They're mm -hmm. just, they don't have the support. Yep. You make it work. We've all done it. But be nice to have the ultimate, like, Total. combo boot. And that, that scenario to me is like, sums it up. You need a boot for that, for that situation. Yeah, they do a lot of the over boots, and they're getting a little crazy with those. Mm -hmm. It's even like little short over boots, and then there's mm -hmm. always the big tall ones that like Wiggies has. Yeah, we were talking about which that, were the good, over boot. Which yeah. were good yeah. too. I take Neos, Sheep Honey, and Moose for sure. The, the Wiggies Neo? Neo? Uh, I don't think, I think Wiggies Check. makes a, Could you, Wiggies makes a different, there like their own brand, but okay. like Neo, I think Neo, Neo is, is the its brand. own yeah. brand, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just it the is. same thing. It's like yep. a nylon with you know, silicone on the inside and you just pull it on over all your stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like a hip waiter. We might've talked yeah. about super those lightweight. You can just roll them up like a football and you can just like take one pair and then you can just throw them back. Like curl the for creek. the other guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Perfect. We seen a pair on the, on the Brooks the other year. Someone. No, like no that, those are like the ones you get at Barney's, like the over boot, the full like hip boot. Yeah, they they just like straight up abandoned those. Oh. They're what? like, fuck these things. We're just yeah. gonna cross this creek. What did we 50 call times. that guy? We we're like, we call him like Sasquatch or, or dude. His boot prints were like enormous, and so we we're, we're like, who is this guy, dude? This thing yeah. is like a size eighteen. <laughs> dude. He's the Yeti. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, we had a Freddy name for it. Yeti. I can't remember what it was. We'll, we'll probably think we of followed it. him in, and then we finally seen those Caught over boots. Him. Yeah, laid on the no. They were like abandoned. Remember, they just like. Oh, I thought you were talking about the dude with the pack raft. Remember I think it was boots? that guy, and okay. he just was like, fuck these things. Yeah, he was just over like, it. I'll come back, and just like <laughs> left them there. Yeah, maybe that he didn't have any more creek crossings, so he's like, we leave yeah, him here now. Yeah, it's yeah. just done. Yeah. Yeah. No, he had more creek crossings. Oh, there was creek crossings <laughs> all the way to the headwaters. They were getting wet. He's probably sick of like taking them on and off and on oh, and off. Man. And like, you know, because he had to cross that thing like 40 times. Yeah. I could see like one or two crossings and be like, all right, man, I got to like cut this out. But if you got to cross it 37 times, just get wet and walk them dry and be done with it. <laughs> gonna walk about, them dry. Said walk them dry. Time. Yeah, I got my just, boots wet right out the gate yeah, on yeah. our trip. I was oh, did you? way more sensitive to like getting my boots wet than you. You were like, okay, we'll just jump here. I was like, well, I'm going to walk around the bend and not get my feet wet. And then Daniel's like, fuck it. Just walk them dry. <laughs> and I was like, mm, I don't play that way. Like, I'm going to at least look. You know? I'm just like, I'm just going to yeah. jump right here. But those gators, that was the first time I ever used them. Oh, Thanks. how'd that go, Thank man? Thank you for letting me use them. Yeah, they oh, worked awesome. The one, yeah. the one time that I jumped the place that Daniel wanted to, um, it was definitely too deep and my feet didn't get wet. So there oh, wasn't cool. any walk and dry that And day. you had the, I think those are the Sitka Stormfront. Yeah, they're uh, the Sitka. Thundershed. One or the other. I can't remember which brand or it which was Sitka, line. I'm not sure which yeah. one. Yeah, they're legit. Super light, right? And, yeah, and they then were light. When they got wet, they weren't too saturated. Yeah, like, no, no. They were, I didn't know some at all. My, cool. my boots weigh way way more than that. I think my boots yeah, weigh two yeah. pounds. So that, yeah, I have like the heavy duty scarpas. So okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we got like deep into boots. So I, I I was I'm rocking crispies, um, which you know they're all right, but my feet get wet right away. Chad had a brand new pair of boots. Uh, Hawang Hawang Hawangs Hawangs Hawang Hawang. 
Yeah. And those look legit, man. Like overall, what did you think? I mean, you did three hard. I did the math. It was 25 miles in three days. I'm super happy with them. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm super happy with them. I, I had scarpers forever and then I just couldn't find like my, I had my scarpers for like six years and they just kind of started like losing their waterproof. Oh, I think okay. the tongue, that's the where mine are right now. finally started breaking down in the tongue. And so like even little Creek crossings, I'd get, start getting wet. Oh, okay. And I'm like you. Jack, like yeah. I don't. Yeah, you were yeah. funny. You were like, I like tiptoeing around. around. No, I'm like, what? No, <laughs> no, it's the last that's thing. when they fall apart. <laughs> yeah, like, no. I don't like them wet. <laughs> no, it's I the think because we got thing. ruined on that Brooks Range where oh. you just like, there's no way around not getting wet. So you just like, yeah. oh, I'm just gonna. Chad walk was like rock skipping across them, like. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a skipper too, man. That's how you do it. We would bring the trash bags and duct tape, feet, dude. Man. Like I, I ain't getting wet feet. No, I don't. I like. I was like, you'll see me out there in my boxers before I would yeah, that's, my boots. That's right. I would walk across that painfully yeah, on bare feet, freezing around. before I would get. That's my feet right. Wet. Third day, I'm like, yeah. hey, Chad, man, your your boots still dry? Because I moved them. And I'm like, man, they're not like super heavy. Yeah. He's like, nah, man, they're warm. I was like, oh. Yeah, I've had wet feet since like the first hour <laughs> <laughs> of day one. <laughs> yeah, no way. I'm a baby uh, with my feet. I have feet issues. I don't get blisters or any of that, but I have like neuromas and high arches. Like I got all kinds of issues. So I don't know. Wet I feet ba- is I one baby more problem. my feet, dude. Yeah. Well, this dude had me side hilling like a motherfucker, dude. Like, like I had never done before. He's like, we don't go down. Right around stuff, full side hill, like not losing elevation, which is nice because it's exhausting to go down a shale hill and try to climb back up and gain another 200 feet back. Yeah. Or, anyway, well, when your feet are wet, I don't care how good your boots and socks and everything are dialed, but when they're wet, man, you just get hot. Like your feet get just the friction of the side hilling, you know, and on the third day pack out with the sheep, man, like. I had blisters on both sides, and I was like, this is the least of my concerns, man. It was so heavy and wet and loaded down, had so far to go. It was like, usually, you know, there are some guys that, like, your foot breaks down and you're, like, done. Yeah. But I can, I have enough, you know, pain tolerance, so I can just kind of burn through it. But today, the they finally healed. Like, I've been putting ointment on them and putting socks on, and, oh, man, dude, tore them up on the way out because they were wet. Because they were wet. Yeah. That end of the day dry out, I think, is critical. <laughs> oh, man. Like, when you get back to the camp yep. or whatever and mm. just, like, take all of that socks off and just let those things get mm. dried yep. up. Yeah, I usually yep. pull my insoles and throw those in my sleeping bag with me. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, nice. Yeah. You have the super, because yeah. you said you have eye arches. I do, too. My arch is insane. I did. Uh, and I, you didn't see me pull those insoles because I, I just, like, I spent the money on sheep feet. Oh, you did? Mm. Yeah. I've been mm-hmm. looking into those. So I have those. It's the first time I've run them. And they're kind of like rubberized. So your foot doesn't slide around mm. even when it is wet. So you don't really need to, they don't retain any water. So you don't got to pull them. Um, yeah. So they're kind of like, and I feel like my feet sweat less this time around than they normally do. Because normally my feet get wet, but it's from sweat. It's uh-huh. never... Because I'm a baby about the water. So yeah. yeah. It's just sweat. <laughs> like, that's enough. As wet as they're getting. Yeah. But these yeah, things, yeah, I was pretty impressed with those sheep feet. So, if people that don't know, Sheep Feet is a company company that makes those insoles kind of like the... Um, super what's Feet. Kind of like Super yeah. Feet, but they're sp- specific for sheep hunters. And well, they, they're custom orthotics. Right. They yeah. come send custom you, like, the box to yeah. put yeah. your foot Step in. in this foam mold. Yep. Like, with both your feet. And you send them in, and they make them specifically for your feet. I think it's a it's a... Check it out. Kid. Check, check Are it out. They like yeah, kinda. Yeah, so but they're I full. The, you can get full length ones, and you can get um, like three quarter length, yeah, like so you can use here. them in different shoes. Yeah, yeah that's one. Yeah, he so has so right see, there. you got feet issues like me. Yeah, yeah. So because they're different sizes, right? Oh. I have the muscle atrophy, so this heel, this arch is way higher than my other one, oh, and okay. I have to use these custom ones that are yeah. built the same way that you're talking about. Yeah, you guys want to see an arch? <laughs> oh yeah, Daniel's got an arch. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good arch too. <laughs> yeah. That's from soccer balls, but I got a mean corner kick, bud. That's yeah. from like wearing too small of shoes your whole yeah. life. That's <laughs> yeah, it's probably my parents. They didn't want to buy me yeah. new yeah. shoes. Uh, I had to wear another these six months out of those. I feel like I, I'm responsible for my feet issues because I was I don't know I had like a weird thing as a little kid where 
I didn't, I never, like, I always felt like my feet looked too big. And I think it was because my parents were just cheap and would always be like, we're going to go size up so you can wear them for next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd be like, I would, I remember like when my, you know, your parents like feel like where your toe is. Like, I'd be like pulling them back. <laughs> like, yeah, these are too big. And then I'd have shoes that were too small. And so my feet like always were like this. That's and now I have like hammer toes. And I always thought that smaller aroma. shoes look cooler too. Yeah. That's how I felt. Like I always, I was like, dude, you look like a clown with big feet. I don't want big feet. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just getting my shoes too small. And then now I'm paying for it. I'm like, that's yeah, right. Now I got to get all steroid shots in my foot because I have a flared neuroma with nerve pain. So smart decisions yeah. for oh, kids. Man. Totally. I want to try out those sheep feet because I did the super feet and those actually work really well for me. But I mean, I still get the rubbing and the hot and like. It's cool I, those I those green one those sheep or the um, super feet they're still kind of slippery like you're saying yeah but I think I think that if you don't have a like foot issue like Jack or I mm-hmm. like I don't think you got to spend the money I think you could go with super feet and I think a lot of your issue like I've told you I have those same crispies I wore them last year yeah. one mm-hmm. sheep hunt and I will never wear them on sheep hunt again and right. my boy Nate bought the same boot and he's just like yeah those are moose hunting boots yeah no i'm i'm done after this season they're it's it's over and the other thing i didn't like about them is the they have metal loop rings mm. and they're sharp edges so they just chew cut. the shit out of your boot straps mm. like i was looking at chad's new boots and they're like nylon thick you know strapping like mm-hmm. stitched and i'm like dude those will never cut your your boot yeah. strip you know your your boots pull up those boots cuz they kind of look like the scarpas I have. Those uh, hand wa- those yeah, hand yeah, they're like part synthetic and part like mm-hmm. they got some suede on them. Yeah. I like them. They're they're not as light as the scarpas. Can you try them on like in town scarpas. somewhere? Well, so the scarpas they have like the two lines. There's like the lighter weight one that has the leak problem. That's the one that Daniel have. Mm-hmm. I went with the heavier ones that are all suede and all Gore Tex under the suede. And I don't have any leak problems with those. So but yours they are weigh not twice no as synthetic. Much. No, they weigh twice as much. So you got like the Mont Blancs or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. They were like the green ones from like six years ago. Okay. And uh, but they, I waited for them to go on sale. Of course. Yeah, I think the ones I bought were like an ice climbing. Oh, okay. Like they were those. I think those signature. are right here, Chad. Your your yeah. hand wongs. Those are bad. Yeah, those yeah, look yeah, like nice frictions. Boots. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, they were like the second he put them on, I'm like, oh wow, those are nice boots. Super they're rigid on the bottom, like the Scarpas. Yeah, I have to have that in the yeah. mountains. Yeah, and they're Gore-Tex. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. Gore-Tex. Little insulation, I believe, on these yeah, two. I got the insulated. I think they make a non-insulation model and an insulated model. Okay, I'm just checking that out. And I could be ro- completely wrong about that. Yeah, I think nice. next year it's time for new boots for me too. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Those are nice, man. Those look like they did the job. And then the price point's, like, really reasonable, if you ask me. As far yeah. as, like, if you're, you know, you want a really good boot, four or $500 is just, like. They kind of look like my deer boots. Those. Um, yeah, but these are a little, those Salloways. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But bulkier and, like, heavier duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can use a crampon on them. Oh, cool. Yeah. A little pro tip, though, on the orthotics. If uh, if you do have any sort of, like, gait issues, any sort of, like, leg length issues, back issues, or feet issues, you can use your insurance and go to a physical therapist. And then mm. you can ask for custom orthotics. And then what they'll do is they, they give you, like, that little foam pack, and you put your feet in. And then they also take a video of you walking. And then they mm. send that off to, like, a podiatrist who will modify your orthotics for your gait. And then typically, if you have insurance, they'll cover it Mm. because it prevents future injuries. Um, So that's what I did. And then once you have it on record, I can call up and get another pair of these for about the same price as like a super feet. Mm. The first one's more expensive and it's paid for though. Yeah, because so, now they have, like, the shape to make the mold. And right, then, it's already made. They yeah. just make another one and send it to you, yeah. Wow, that's... You go to where? Your foot level. doctor? You, you go to a physical therapist. Oh, okay. So it took years for me to figure this out because I'm a little frugal. But as soon as I figured it out, <laughs> and then, like, the pair I showed you, I put I put I I have two of them right now, and 
I've had both of these for like six years probably. Yeah. And they don't wear down. I put them in all my boots. Like these are, this pair was all, I brought these shoes, these Scarpa approved shoes on our trip. Mm -hmm. And I also had my Scarpa mountain boots and I moved those orthotics back and forth, but they also go mm -hmm. under my waders, like under my switch foot them out of everything. and actually yeah. get wet in my waiter boot and they do just fine. Yeah. Cause oh, they're good cool. material. Yeah. That's, what's good about the three quarter length that like what you have is like, you can use that transfer it from right. shoe to shoe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I got those full ones. And you had the option for, but my issue is like under my toes, like oh, your forefoot. So, yeah. I, so that like mm. I couldn't really do the three quarter. But that sheep feet, like it seems like they're a pretty good company. Like if you ever have issues, they'll just make you new ones. Or if they start to wear out, you can send them back in and they'll like replenish them and redo awesome. the top if the foam or mm. anything. So, they seem like a quality company and, and it's a i think it's a young kid who's just like a hunter and his dad has just been like a pd pedi or podiatrist podiatrist, podiatrist. yeah like yeah his whole life so he grew up around it yeah he's like man I, I i need something better than super feet so he yeah. started this company yeah that's so cool seems pretty cool. Very cool yeah and you could use it for anything like hockey or whatever absolutely yeah. I, I have some in my hockey skate the super yeah. feet ones yeah. yeah those are good no, it's a good, good tip there, Jack, because uh, I think, you know, if you like to play in the mountains and, and all of us are getting a little bit up there, like not all our old guys, but certainly on the other side of being a young, young guy. <laughs> that, old bull. Old bull. What, old bull. Leaking a little oil. Um, <laughs> no, I just think about if you can do some preventative maintenance on top of a routine, you know, workout or training. um, Chad said he like hits elite three days a week and gets it like it's like well that's a good idea instead of like, just hitting the gym he's actually doing endurance workouts and you know plyometrics and you know you start adding some you know extra care to your feet you obviously go to the chiropractor getting your back checked out like you know you can still get out there for a long time mm -hmm. you start working on some of this stuff and this year was a real cold reminder of that because I didn't get after it the way that I normally would in the preseason. And I was like kind of afraid to tell Chad that, but I knew I could gut it out. But because I was like, fuck, man, I think Chad's pretty gangster, man. I think he's going to push and, you know, go hard. And I'm like, ah, I got to stay with him, you know. <laughs> and he was actually great, man. He was like great pace, great break times, like just like everything was like on point to I would take a break the same time or even after. And he was perfect for that. But I don't know, man. I think just getting after it with some of that preventative maintenance and work will just make what's already uncomfortable and kind of miserable at times at least a little more bearable totally you know so do i try to tell all my boys that it's a hundred times easier to stay in shape than get in shape <laughs> mm -hmm. like That's just right. like and if you and it doesn't take much like people think it's like this big commitment and it's not it's not it's just a few days a week you just need to like do something and it doesn't have to be the gym i mean some people hate the gym but just like get out and do something yeah, because otherwise, if you and the older you get, man, it goes so fast. Like you, yeah. can, you can go on one week vacation and lose everything you worked <laughs> for in like three months, and the muscle memory comes back fast. But yeah, you can lose it so quick. Yeah, you especially like cardio and endurance. Mm -hmm. But once you're out there, like it's just yeah, day two, day it's, three, it's I was it's doing pretty good. Attitude more than anything, right? In the mountains, really, yeah. it is. Yeah. That's that's a good point. It is. It's a it's a state of mind. You know what I mean? Like if you get up and it's a beautiful day and it's like, oh, it's gonna be pretty nice today. Yeah. You fill up your water, you get packed up, you have some good conversation, cup of coffee, you hit the trail, all the aches and pains kind of squeak out, and then it's like up oh, back at it, and then you're kinda over it. You yeah. know, it's yeah. funny how that works. Versus the wake up to the the winds of the shat. The winds of the shat and the yeah. rains of the knee. So that new stone glacier got a workout, huh? <clears throat> Oh, the stone glacier got to work out. Yeah, poles sure. poles yeah. aren't bent. They're stayed. Nope. In that place. tent is legit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it, that? What's that tent again? What, which one did you? This, it's the skyscraper. Two, skyscraper. Two person. Okay. I wish they made it three. Yeah, you were the, saying that the it's two a little bit two. wider. But we did figure it out, you know, because we've always been a three person <laughs> tent family, like for two people. You know, but all the sheep hunts I've been on, all three man tents. Same. Um, so this is the first two. And it, the first night we slept 
next to each other, which was a huge mistake because all we kept each other up all night bumping each other. And so we found a perfectly flat spot and then went opposing. Yeah, swapped. It, yeah, mm-hmm. and then it was fine. The rest <clears throat> of the time it was like it was good. And then they the vestibules have improved so much that like in, in these winds of the shat and stuff, I could cook for us on that wide open vestibule. It was huge. Yeah. Oh, because that stone glacier is like it's two vestibules, right? Yeah, yeah one side. on each side. So the, t- the tent is the same shape no matter which side you're on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. See, I have Hilleberg, and you can't. I, you, I can't uh, do. You can't alternate. Yeah, because it's sloping. Right. It's like you're in like a mummy bag. And yeah. Tent's have, like shaped like a mummy. You know? Yeah. And the doors in the front. And doors by in your the front. feet. Yeah. yeah. Vestibule mm-hmm. all in the front. Yeah. This has a double. Each person has a door and their yeah. vestibule. So when you open up the doors and keep the doors open and the vestibule, it looks. Yeah. Way bigger than opens it, it is. up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got your yeah. pack in there uh, all versus your inside. In there. Yeah, it, it has so. these like cross poles. Well, one cross pole that comes up above, and then what also is cool is the um, the main tent um, kind of uh, pole liner. You know, the thing that would hold it, the some pole support tube or whatever. Yeah, is isn't isn't w- woven into the tent. It's actually attached with these like snaps. And it and so it's like six inches away. The rain flies six inches away from the tent. Then yeah. And so then the, you have a, a six inch higher place on the tent for the vestibule to go out to, and then it has these cross poles that hold it up. So the vestibule is like twice as big as it should be. Oh okay. On both sides. We got so it up on the screen, super. guys. And that cross pole that you put in the middle makes the sides of the tent go like straight up. Right. So it's not rounded. You know, so you could both be sitting up and not be touching the wall. Oh, it's pulling it. It's <coughs> yeah. pulling it out. Yeah, that's nice. So it's like a bathtub no, their, style. Their gear is like they're it's very thought out. Yeah, totally. Like they do a lot of R and D before they come out with anything. And yeah. then just like the general water resistance of the tent, I felt was like supreme. way better supreme. Yeah, way better than anything I've ever been in. Um and it we we're getting hit with sideways rain every night and wind. It it, it rain it rained and poured and blew every night. I mean rain like someone's throwing a bucket onto the yeah. tent like sheets. <laughs> What's the weight? Sheets. What is that? Does that have? It's five. It's like right at five pounds. I think it's right four yeah. pounds twelve. Yeah, four, it. Yeah. yeah, packed weight. Packed weight five. And those little uh, stakes. I was yeah. concerned. I was like, man, are these going to hold? Like, oh, yeah, they're little, really thin little, little tiny. Like, they look yeah. like a pencil. Yeah. I remember when you brought that thing out to the Deshka, just kind of like you mm-hmm. and Mateo tried it out. I remember when you set it up, I'm like, well, damn, this is like a true two-man, like two full-grown six-foot men can squeeze in this thing. Barely. But, but, but I figured it had to be head to toe. There's no way. Yeah. You got to do head to toe. Yeah. Yeah. So you what, so you guys didn't get the the four man guide to sleep in the whole sheep hunt? No, we didn't bring the guy. We didn't get uh, the teepee either. Yeah, if we had a teepee, that would have been nice. Can I can I tell you guys something about the teepee? You didn't bring it. Oh, I brought it. Yeah. What? It just sat in the other tent. Oh man, <laughs> we could have been using like, it that whole fuck, time. Man, those guys probably could have used that. Yeah. Because I didn't know what we were gonna do. Because we yeah. were even talking about taking Chad's Hilleberg if we were gonna go. So what'd you guys sleep in? Oh, you're yeah. at base camp. We stayed at base camp the whole time, yeah. every night, and then... Wall tent with the uh, wood stove? It might as well have been. <laughs> I know we had Miller High Life every night. Well, there's just one bed, one nightcap. We ate one dehydrated meal. Oh, nice. Yeah, we had one. sandwiches and rice bowls. Uh, and, yeah, nice. it, was, it was interesting. I was like, dang, Chad, he, he spoiled me, man. He spoiled me. Dude, we you can the, go out of the razor like that. It's like it's almost like it's not even sheep honey. Yeah, totally, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's kind of unfair. Yeah, it really is. Well, it's nice to have that like as a gap. Yeah, it's your gap yeah. here. You know, it, it really exactly. was. It really actually was. Um, that um, here's a pretty good photo of that stone glacier though. Like, oh, they got that little thing open. We needed that open the last night. That thing got like that thing the there? humidity got to yeah. like ninety nine point nine percent in there. Yeah, that little. What like, does that do? Um, it's supposed to. Create some uh, venturi, some vent. Like it's just an ex- another vent that goes all the way outside, mm. but still blocked so that water can't come in. Oh, and we could have opened it on that last day when it was pretty like humid. Oh yeah, it got all like sweaty. We are down low. Yeah, I think it's mm. supposed to be designed so that when the air is flowing under the rain fly and in between the tent, like that air movement, like venturi effects and like sucks all the humidity out of the inside yeah that's Mm -hmm. pretty cool 
Yeah. Mm. Like I'm saying, they their stuff's really designed. Like I've been looking at their like big tent for like a moose. That's six man. Six man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that thing's. I was telling Jack about it because you can. I haven't seen it. You should pop it up. It unzips on floorless. It. I'm on it. It's like it's thought out. It's expensive as hell. Yeah, it's like eighteen hundred bucks. I think it's oh, twenty. It's, oh, it's more. Oh <laughs> shit, it's that much. The Sky Dome for twenty seven fifty. Oh man, <laughs> dude, that's the same as Sold the fucking out. as the Cabela's guide. Yeah, but except I probably, probably like one but one fifth the five weight. times. Oh no, twenty seven pounds. Thirty four pounds. Yeah, what's well, a lot Damn. of material, bro? Look at that thing; it's massive. I'm going. I'm going uh, full wall. So what I like I, about but this, it's like stove. Yeah, and it goes floorless, you right? Can Chad, take you're it saying floorless, like uh-huh. you can zip out the oh, floor, that's sweet. which I think is how it's set up. This, where you way. can like See zip out half the floor and fold it up, so you have like the stove on the like side that you doesn't have. The floor they got they got the stove on yeah. this one right here. No, it's a it's a legit. Oh look, they have multiple little air ones vents too. Oh, those little things it's like all venturi out. Venturi. Is there another vestibule on the backside? Um, yeah, if I didn't look. have a deal, I wouldn't even contemplate it. But here's a good side view. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. So no, it's kind of like kind of like, like, like that. It's, it's pretty like much the, the same shape as the as that Cabela's guide. It's big. Yeah, mm-hmm. that thing's it's big. Like, like look at the floor plan. Like it's big. Yeah, it, it's that's a really really nice setup, man. Are they like providing a stove now too, like yeah. a Kafaru style? No, they don't. That's without the stove. You got to buy the stove. And I don't. Th- they don't have a. St- they don't they sell a stove. You got to get like another. Yeah. So I'd probably setup. buy the Kafaru stove actually. Yeah. Yeah. Alaska Tent and Tarp sells a nice stove. I have that one. Uh, I think the Kafaru one's a little smaller, maybe a little bit more. They have a couple. Compact. I think they have a titanium oh. one. Okay. They have a round one, flat one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the the Kafaru. Stove set up. I just, I have the tent and tarp one. I was supposed to make one year on a moose hunt. I was supposed to make like a Visqueen shelter. Mm-hmm. It was, I had no idea how I was even going to get started. I just brought this roll of Visqueen and a wood stove and packed it all back. <laughs> never even put it up. Never wrapped the trees. Or the, but he's like, we're going to bring a roll of Visqueen and wrap these trees up and then figure out a way to put a roof on it and then we'll punch a hole and do it. I'm like, all right, let's bring all this shit and try it out. And it never even got taken out of the boat. Yeah. What are you guys staying in up there? Um, and at Moose Camp. Yeah. That year, I had a six man North Face that was just big enough where I could put a couple cots in it, and we just me and my cousin stayed in that. And there was like never a need for a stove. It was never that cold, and we just rocked that. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I have a uh, eight, eight man Alaskan in or uh, excuse me Cabela's Instinct. So it's like a Kwanzaa hut shaped mm, looking thing. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I mean, it's true eight man. You can get six, six cots in there, mm. six of the short cots in there. Um, and it has a wood stove set up and I brought the wood stove the first year. We mm-hmm. didn't need it. And we're now six years in with that. And I have yet to put the wood stove in there. Okay, it hasn't cool. been needed. You get six, five, six guys in there, man. I mean, it's yeah, it a lot of mouth breathing and, and farting going on. It just warms right up. You yeah. know what I mean? It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't take Carlo long. has the nice Kafaro eight man TP. Yeah, don't He's you had it for years, but he didn't get the out. he didn't get the stove. It takes a while to learn, like because you will get hot, what, like, too hot, too yeah. too like unbearable. Mm-hmm. Like you got to just go outside. Mm-hmm. You got to learn it. But he has he bought this old uh, like a Yukon. It's called a Yukon stove. It's not like super light, but it still folds down to like you can fit it in a little bag like that. Yeah, I don't you know think I saying? I don't need light in that because you're like it's, it's yeah. moose hunting. You yeah, you're either on a four wheeler or a yeah, raft or something. It's not light. So yeah. Why do you need a light stove? Like I'm never yeah. gonna use a stove sheep hunting. No. Yeah. Like for oh, me, the stove's yeah. not even for because it's like too cold. Like yeah. a sleeping bag would keep me warm. It's for drying stuff yeah. out. It's like mm-hmm. more like a fog, like a fog nap yeah. is where like I want the stove. Yeah, yeah. dry the, the yeah. dry out mm-hmm. the stuff. That's I so feel it's wet. wet all the time. I feel like the light stoves are made for like Rocky Mountain mule deer hunting and stuff. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. or like backpack elk in the Rockies, like where you're in there for non Alaskans who get yeah. cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. We didn't just want to throw it toughen out. Toughen up, like boys. Toughen <laughs> up. Chad's just yeah. gonna say it how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Toughen up, boys. <laughs> That's right. I mean, no, because if you think about it, those guys are hunting September. October and it's still hitting seventies and eighties in the day. And I'm sure it gets cold at night. Like I'm not going to downplay like high Alpine Rocky stuff. I'm sure it gets cold as hell. 
cold as hell. That doesn't make sense. Cold as shit out there. But yeah, like it well, takes a lot to really need a stove. Like you said, a fog knack. That's an exceptionally shitty ass yeah, weather yeah. area. Yeah, like, it's very just bad. for like drying. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Like the guys that I know that do run those stoves, a lot of those guys just take like lighter logs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just cut them into pieces. Yeah. Because exactly. mm -hmm. it doesn't take like. I mean, you can cook yourself out of those, like out of the tent where it's like unbearable. Yeah. Right. Can't sweat even, lodge. Yeah. Open the doors. Fast. Yep. Where it's like, <laughs> sweat yeah, lodge. I can't yeah. sleep in there. Yeah. yeah. No, you can't. You might just take some ayahuasca. For yeah. 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 <laughs> that happened to us on that, on that cheap, on that float the first time. Threw a bunch of wood oh, in there. Dude. Just, <laughs> just like had to be outside for like two hours. It was just so hot in there. But now he brings like the, they sell the Duraflame. Yep. The little one. Oh yeah, like that's a hockey puck or something. Yeah, it's like a, it's like that big, and that's perfect. just enough, yeah. just to get it warm in there, and just have that, and then one in the morning, and you're good. Yeah, that's all you need, and it'll burn. It'll just hold that little. It's like a sterno can, basically, mm -hmm. in your stove. Yeah, yeah, now that's perfect. And if you can figure out how to do that right, then you got it dialed. But yeah, you you throw some cut up two by fours in there, and you're like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get out. Open the doors. Yeah, yeah. So uh sweating. No, we did good. We stayed in the four man and and we you know, our intent was that we were gonna spike at least for one to three nights, you know, after a day or two of you know, searching the area. Chad kinda already knew some of the general area and bulls that we were gonna look at, but um we were able to, you know, do an average of like seven and a half to ten miles per day and cover pretty much everything we needed to cover in that time frame and then just come right back to camp. And I guess the only thing about that is that we were losing, you know, 2000 feet of elevation every day, kind of going up and down. Um, yeah. But I didn't really think that it was that big a deal, honestly. No, it's, it's like you start weighing it. Like there wasn't anything that, like you're limited out there. Like we're already at the back. Like we're at the headwaters of mm -hmm. that, and you can't really anything further. That's too much further that we would need to spike out for. You really couldn't. You could reach it all in a day. Like right. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason like you couldn't be patient and make a play on a sheep would be like kind of like we kind of got screwed a little bit by the fog coming in. Yeah. And. and yep taking like three hours out of our day where we had to wait for the fog because we couldn't locate that sheep. Mm -hmm. If we could have located it, the fog would have been great to help us get there yep. undercover, but we weren't able to locate it in those like small holes you would get in the fog. And so we wound up having to sit there and wait until it like burned off and then we could move. And we, we ate up a lot of time. And yeah. Then, that one day was Friday. I think was it Friday. Yeah. We burned almost three hours waiting up there at, you know, 6,500 feet. Yeah. Snow, fog, rain. We ended up wrapping up in puffies and rain gear and tarps. Just went to sleep. Yeah. Passed out on the side then of the, the mountain. Then the sun came out and it was like unbearably like, hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only like, sheep hunting, dude. Yeah. Oh, and, then, and then I like looked at the my phone. I was like, oh, it's Friday the 13th. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, it was, we got the full, the full mixed bag on the weather situation. As far as did you guys get a bunch of snow? We got snow on the peaks, mm -hmm. and then we got snow another night at camp. Okay, because I think but you were stick. you were talking to some guys that were hunting Eureka that were getting dumped on, right? Yeah, um, my wife's good friend, her son was up in Eureka, and I think they were looking for sheep, and he was saying that they were getting dumped on i saw some mm. photos like they were getting snowed on pretty good like like more than the inch or two that we saw yeah oh uh, okay three or four. Oh wow yeah oh. yeah the snow that came high it stayed yeah when we were up there oh it didn't melt off mm -mm. No, oh okay no the stuff at camp didn't stick yeah yeah it burned off melting well yeah, we, before we get into the um you guys is yeah yeah much no, entire I'm just, sheep story yeah yeah uh, let's just give a couple of shout outs um to some Good. of the sponsors real quick uh, I want to start with local greens actually um, oh, local nice. greens is um, a company that is doing hydroponics and they are selling their greens and all their all the stuff that they're growing um, right out of double shovel uh, we me and my wife has a subscription I want to say we get three bags a week. 
we're really big into local greens. We have our own garden, but as you know, as winter comes, that's going to run out. Um, so now's the time to get the subscription and you can get different, uh, whatever they're growing, there's different options of like spicy greens and, and, you know, Asia greens and different stuff. And I'm sure there's going to be more stuff that's coming down the line. Um, so check them out. It's local greens underscore AK on Instagram, and you can hit them up there. You can also check them out at double shovel cider. And that's where you can get the subscription. Uh, it's very cheap. It's like $4 a bag or something like that, you know, between four, a little around $4 a bag. And we'll get two of those bags and we eat that every night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we, I bought a couple of bags a few weeks back. And my wife put them down in the crisper and forgot about them. She's like, oh, I, I busted out those greens. And I'm like, oh, they got to be slimy. She's like, I can't freaking believe it. It's like six days later. She still made a sandwich with them, dude. Like, well, the, the, uh, cool, the really cool thing is they're, yeah. they're like really cutting that down when you go to pick it up. Yeah, so no, if I your mean, pickup was... day is like Monday, they're like, okay, well, we're going to cut theirs down mm -hmm. when they get here. Mm -hmm. or right close and have yeah. it ready for you to pick up. It's like so it's always really fresh. Before, yeah, yeah it's actually, it actually stays a long, long time. Yeah, I'm like, kind of curious how that works. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's harvested that day that you pick it up typically, and then mm -hmm. it should last four weeks. I mean, that's how long it, the lettuce and stuff that is being that's cut why and shipped up so here. And the way that they you know fill the back up with air and then tie it tight so it's all fluffy, mm -hmm. it, it keeps that lettuce from touching each other. Um, yeah, so all kinds of different lettuce mixes, spicy lettuce mixes, romaines, kale, arugula, and a bunch of different herbs. And you just go to the, their square site, localgreensalaska.com, and you can sign up for the subscription. And, uh, yeah, we have fresh greens either every week or biweekly. Yeah, and it's 100% worth it, dude. Once you have mm -hmm. it, you're like, what? it's it's kind of that deal where, like, you have fresh salmon and you're like, or you eat the shrimp out of Prince William Sound, and you're like, what have I Something been eating this whole time? Yeah. Like, this is way better. So check them out. Um, once again, their Instagram is localgreens underscore AK. Uh, and moving on to another set of greens, the Treehouse AK. Your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Be sure to ask the bud tender about their deal of the day because, honestly, there's always something good on deck. And, guys, listen, this is where the culture lives. At the Treehouse, their dedication to servicing consumers has been developed through a lifetime of involvement in the cannabis culture. They're committed to providing the highest quality products at whatever value your budget affords, while always maintaining the deep-rooted principles that have carried them this far. Their focus is on relationships over transactions, and you can always depend on them to treat you with the respect you deserve. Hit them up at thetreehouseak.com, and remember you must be 21 years of age to enter their store. Serrano's Mexican Grill, my personal go-to for authentic Mexican food in Anchorage. It's our own new generation of cocina. Recipes are all inspired by their rich heritage and family know-how. All ingredients are made in-house. There's a new tequila bar, and it is legit. I personally recommend the Mescalita. Locations on Tudor and Northern Lights. Follow their food truck location on Instagram and check out their daily specials, which I highly recommend at serranosmexicangrill.com. Tailored restoration, 24-hour emergency home services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling, including burst pipes, overflowing toilets, downed trees, fire, pet accidents, and vandalism. Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you at any time, day or night. Give them a call at Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Right on. Right Shout on. Out right on. Boys, man. Thanks to Shout the sponsors, to the man. Thanks yep. a bunch for those yep. guys. Definitely thanks to those guys. Make this happen, man. Yeah, Make they definitely happen. did. You know, don't forget AKO Farms too. They got mm -hmm. their products over there. Um, Heather's Choice, Minigato's Accounting, Lawn Pro. Now's the time to sign up with Lawn Pro for that winter stuff, especially if you got some older parent or someone. Or that's a really cool gift. You know, that's a good idea to someone to an auntie or you know yeah. a, a friend or someone that got hurt. You know, just call yeah. up call up uh, Justin over there at at Lawn Pro AK and just set up the whenever it snows. You know three inches or whatever the deal is. Or the, le the leaves are about to fall. Yeah, they'll I mean, come rake that, it up. That's a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, it's worth leaves. it, man. Yeah, get them Some out of those there, things, do a final like, cleanup. is it worth your time to do it or just have these guys 
get it done and you come yeah. home and it's done. Yeah. A yeah. lot, a lot of to be said for that. Yeah. And I ran into uh, Dustin at the bait shack too. Um, today our, our, our Coho kids. rodeo, man. How'd that go? Coho rodeo went good, man. Yeah. You Coho got to go went, down there for that, man. Yeah. I, I, I was following on Instagram. It looked like a, a huge success. Um, you saw it in person, like give us a quick tons of people, um, tons of sponsors. I went down there with my son and my dad, um, linked into, linked into a couple silvers and then we're legal there. Um, my son was just killing those pinks that he just loves to like uh, just snatch just, them. Just He's like, there's him. one, there's one. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So it, it went really good. And, uh, we're, we're, I was talking with Dustin today about some, some more live event stuff that maybe we want to get a, get a, be a part of coming this winter, like some ice fishing stuff. You into ice fishing, Chad? I haven't really done much of it. You got to come, man. I heard it's fun. My boy Aaron uh, Wills is like, he seems to be yep. huge. I got, a, I got a deal going with him. He's going to come out too. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's so much fun, dude. He seems like he always has a blast. I haven't I haven't done it. It's, it's just like it feels like you're camping. Like it just extends. Yeah. Like I've been going and bringing Jack and his kids and, and Brandon and his kids and Brandon's brother. Oh, yeah. And, we end up going with like twenty people, dude. Fire, beers, we're cooking out there exactly. and catching fish and I don't care which one. Yeah, so we're we're talking with Dustin about setting up some sort of uh you know, ice fishing, you know, jam I mean he already has his little jamboree or something. Yeah, we wanna like do Jewel something Lake that's and- s- something a little bit more uh with some money involved, with some sponsors, some sort of competition or something like yeah. that and, and about some other live events. So cool. he's still he's still killing it down there. Ran into him and his wife there at, at the school. Or, or his my son and his daughter are in the same class. This oh, year. cool! That's right, Aquarian. Everybody goes to the same class. Yeah, yeah, so they're in the same class. So I ran into him and yeah. bouncing ideas off of Silver's them. Silver's still coming in. Silver's are still coming in. He's still renting the equipment out there. Um, he says he's going till like the end of September. Wow. He says he's going to start doing because he also does like trout stuff and he stuff does, like that. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to have all this equipment and. Take some people out to do that, and Sweet. till the till the ice fishing season starts. They Where just is they extended gonna do? salmon today. Oh, they did. Yeah, on the Kenai and the Russian. Sweet. They extended the season it's for reds. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's I think because awesome. they're still pouring in. Yeah, the numbers are still pretty good. Seems like yeah. everything's getting later and later, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I've been talking about like it almost seems like they're gonna have to like change moose season yeah yeah and the caribou too like now in unit 13 they're yeah. all still on their summer grounds down low yeah. over there you can't get yeah. them yeah the 40 mile herd is like never there when you think like it's always like super late so last year they had to what keep it it was open all winter yeah. i don't even think mm-hmm. they ever reached their quota no they didn't no they didn't yeah oh, yeah jeff jeff <coughs> yeah he went like middle of winter that was uh, his first was caribou early yeah. spring like ish yeah, they yeah. should. I wonder what it takes, like three years in a row, where they're like, okay, well, maybe we should set this stuff back. The moose is a right, though. They need to move that back if it continues to, continues this direction. I'm, of we're, like we're up 65 to, degrees. Yeah, out. and they're like not hitting rut, you know? Oh. And it's just like, okay, well, they're going to sit in that alder patch and my whole hunt, I have to go bust through this. And they yeah. should also wait to start school till after moose season. Oh, I agree. <laughs> you know, it should be oh, a thing. I mean, yeah. There's so many families and... and yeah. That go do that and depend on that meat, and it should be a deal where you can, yeah, not have to go to school. Yeah, Kennedy can't go this year because her mom was like, "No, she's you know we got this plan and that plan, and she got hockey and trips, and it's like she can't go hunting." And I'm like, you know, I got her on the caribou, I got her on a lot of trips, but I'm like, oh, man, like I wish it was extended out. Although I do have the any bull tag later, we can go do that. But I don't yeah, know. That'll be a good one. I'm with you guys, man. Like. The last three years in moose camp, there has been, so we usually spend average like seven to nine nights, full nights, Mm -hmm. actually in camp. And by like one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm chilling in my basketball shorts. Oh, totally. Just airing out, you know, with some Crocs and basketball shorts and a t-shirt and, you know, just dinking around camp. And then, you know, rolls around four or five o'clock and I get suited and get back up on the hill and look around. But it's so fucking hot, dude. It has been. I mean, even when it's not hot and sunny, it's still like warm. So, yeah. and um, those creeks are low. Nights. Those creeks mm-hmm. are low. It's hard to find water sometimes on some of these hills. We're a little worried about that moose float because oh, that last year that. we went, the yeah. river, the water was level was good. And mm-hmm. it was still like an entire day of like jumping in and out of the pulling. raft, pulling, yeah. pushing. And that's always fun. Yeah, especially first day on them, just loaded with like 800 beers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, beers, you, yeah. you drink 650 beers. 
And then you then put you a launch. moose and a caribou in it and then really drag it around. See how that works. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to get out of that first day. But once those other tributaries come in, yeah, it, was a it gets flowing. Place. But that first day, is, dude, that first day is a little rough. <laughs> At least it was. Rough. She's got the Yeti 125 just oh, like just 95% full, full of <laughs> double shovels. and and uh, Actually, the 125, we I put um, Fred Meyer sells those ice blocks oh yeah mm -hmm. like the block of ice and we'll put like four of those last time we did in the and all the food is in there and we'll only open it up when it's like yeah, time morning, to, and night. morning and night to eat yeah. that breakfast and eat dinner mm. and we threw away four ice blocks yeah at the end mm -hmm. of the trip dude that's and a it was, good thing yeah, yeah it was awesome and it was, everything was good everything like you literally had to pull out what the dinner was to thaw it out to thaw it out yeah. like in the morning yeah. you know yeah. so like all right what do we want to <laughs> eat tonight let's pull it out on the raft so that it's defrosted by the oh, time yeah. you get to the camp you can straight up freeze stuff in a yeti yeah like just with ice like you oh, can yeah. freeze stuff yep it's yeah incredible yeah. my wife got they're heavy pissed. and they're yeah. bulky as hell and they're expensive but they will keep ice Absolutely, forever man. as long as you're not in and out of it yeah yep. that's yep. the key man you in and out we of froze it. some local greens the other camping trip my Ooh, wife was pissed Alexia was not mm -hmm. happy She's about like, you let that. it touch the ice i was like it wasn't frozen when i put She's it in like, there I can't make a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Mom don't got a blender in the motor home? <laughs> no, we Planning because the cooler works too good. I know. I was like, wow, that's a bummer. Yeah. We, we had some, uh, we had uh, a Yeti in the back of the truck, uh, I think year before last. And um, we left a bunch of beers laying in there for like six or seven nights and came back and there was like four or five of them exploded in there because they froze oh wow yeah so we came back thinking we had like all these beers and yeah, we did good we had plenty of beer yeah. i think we might have had like one or two left over so those five may not have gotten drink but it was still kind of devastating you come back and five of your no fun you know precious I beers are exploded in the yeah cooler made a mess have you tried those dehydrated beers yet no, I see. Yeah, is that really yeah. a thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I've seen him. No, yeah, it is. They sell like a. Is that like, like a, the most hardcore sheep hunter in the it's world? It's got to be, dude. Yeah. It's like for kill day. It's like, right? what do you do after you cut your toothbrush in half? I'm going to dehydrate a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's it, insane. I yeah, never even heard of it. Self carbonation <laughs> and everything. Yeah. So, how does it work? You just add water? Yeah. yeah. You add water, and then there. I think there's a separate, like, Technique to get it to to carbonate quickly. Yeah, I don't know if it's a tablet or what, but it's a powder that you mix. Oh, I just want to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Just that I, just, I, just, I like have uh, to know how that is. I think we could. The dehydrated. We should try shovel. it. Yeah. So, dude's Maybe over here like putting a scratch in a Nalgene, and this guy's over here dumping his beer in there. Like, yeah, about to have me a cold shot. <laughs> <laughs> This was the first sheep hunt that I didn't sneak in some like uh, some of those little one ounce shots though. Oh, that's a good idea. They do make like the one ounce shot dehydrated as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I know that that was a these huge. These are like the most first world problems I've yeah. ever heard of in my <laughs> totally, life. Totally. Yeah. Like this almost makes me feel bad being an American right now. <laughs> Uh, that, is, that is insane i never i would have never even thought you could do that yeah i know that at first the um the hard alcohol one was like the mixed drink one was like a problem because people were trying to sneak them on planes and so they were like mm. banned for a period of time <laughs> and that's you know gone away but alkies were taking advantage of it yeah they're just like bringing like 10 of those packs and pouring in the water of playing getting hammered. What's the Ziploc bag you got here, sir? Yeah, the plane, the plane doesn't like it when you bring your own booze. No, they don't. No. Oh, you got to spend $20 for a beer. Oh, man. I don't like it drinking on airplanes, man. Oh, man. It's just oh, like at that altitude, it. I come like down and I'm just hangover. like, yes, it is a gnarly hangover. Yeah. Oh, speaking about that, we were talking about that LaFonza flight. To Germany. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and my brother got hammed. Oh, you did. One night was on that, that flight because it's like an 18 hour. Yeah. Is whatever that going to his, his uh, wedding to in, Gre in Greece? Yes. Or yeah. uh, where, was it Greece? Yeah, in Greece. Yeah. Okay. And we sat in the back. We went way in the back and we're hanging out with the, like the stewardess or whatever. And it's free drinks. It's like whatever you guys want back yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, she, she's like, front, I'm, she's like, I'm back. going to, yeah. Well, there's like, <clears throat> that plane is huge. Oh, yeah. sections. And, but we were yeah. all the way in the back. And she's like, I'm going to bed, but you guys can have whatever you want here. Yeah. So we're just like, like you give, know. Like, just <laughs> yeah. give you the keys to the bar. Yeah, no, it's just right there. Just like, all right, well. I'll try this one. Yeah. You're getting married. Let's do this. Yeah. You're hurting or what? Because oh, yeah. I'm with Jack. Like, I, I can drink on. Actually, I think I've, 
I fainted one time and fell right in the aisle. I yeah, got like yeah. hammed and like I stood up and <laughs> went to walk back and I was good. Well, you know how you sit for a long time and drink three yeah. or four drinks and then you get up, like, you start oh, walking a little bit and it's like, whoa, yeah, there it all sets uh, in. And I was like, <laughs> just, yeah, just I think I was on my way to Arizona on a direct. So it was like a red uh, eye, man. And I just... Is there any like, medics uh, on the airplane? Uh, sir, aisle nine. Uh, sir, are you okay? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely okay. Let me get up. Because I actually fell down and laid down. I was kind of like, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good Beats the hell out of sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, dude. Yeah, speaking of altitude, man, we were running around like 7,000 feet this weekend, this last yeah, weekend. Yeah, we uh, right at that. That was kind of like getting me a little bit. Like, I, I mean, not like altitude. You'd feel in like Flagstaff or Denver or something. You're definitely but, aware of it, and yeah. you're not. And to be honest, like I, I, Flagstaff was the first place I was ever at that I that someone brought that to my attention. Like mm. I didn't even know about it growing up here. Yeah. Like everything that I did in the mountains, skiing, snowboarding, backcountry, whatever, is like south, it's like yeah. three thousand, thirty five hundred feet, is like the most you're at. And I remember being in at Snow Bowl and like hiking the pipe. And I was playing, like, men's league basketball, men's league flag football. Like, all I was – I was in the best shape I've ever been in my life. And I was, like, gassing out, yeah. hiking. And I was like, dude, I think I'm getting sick. And, like, one of the local guys is like, you know you're at, like, 12,000 feet right yeah, now. And yeah. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, there's, like, no oxygen here. And I was like <laughs> – he's like – I thought you're from Alaska. I was like, "Yeah, dude, we don't. We're I don't. Sea we don't snowboard <laughs> Mount McKinley. Like, yeah. my <laughs> ski resort is like 400 feet above sea level at the bottom. Like, I think it's actually the lowest, yeah, altitude ski resort in the world. Yeah, Ali is. Yeah, Alaska is really. It's basically yeah. at sea level. I always I mean, love it is like just right there. Back in the AK Soul days, we were, we were taking the we you take bands. It's happened more than once, but we were taking. Uh, this magazine came from Europe to do the story on Brock's band. And uh, we were driving to Girdwood and they're like, just glued to the windows, like in awe. And they're like, oh my God, dude, like how high up are we right now? Like what altitude? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I'd say about 35 feet. <laughs> and the guy's like, fuck man, is that the ocean? I was like, yes, sir. Yeah. He's like, God damn it. He's like, you would never know. These mountains look so massive. I'm like, yeah, but they're not high. Yeah. Yeah. They just start right here at the yeah, ocean. That's right. Yeah. And go straight up. Oh, it was hilarious. No, I mean, I wasn't like gassed out. Um, I, I was just feeling it like my, my breath uh, rhythm was more like deep. Like I had mm -hmm. to suck a little more air to like get the yep. oxygen to the brain and like make sure like. Those knife line little stints we were walking on. It takes like, like balanced a, out. It takes like a <clears throat> longer period of time where you get, I guess you, it would be like when you get your second breath, your second mm, wind. Mm -hmm. It takes that like longer period of time where you're like your heart rate slows down and you figure out that pace you can go at where you're not like, you're not laboring breathing. Like your muscles are tiring before you're like breathing hard. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and you kind of get in accurate. that mode to where you figure out like this is the speed I can go. And it takes a little longer to figure that out at a little more altitude than that's the you nailed it. That's exactly what it was. It was like finding that balance of pushing hard, finding your breath, finding your rhythm, and then being like, man, I I can just keep walking as fast as I want, but the breathing thing needs to get in check. And once I got that in check, I wasn't even like thinking about the walking. I was yep. just doing that. And I was actually focusing on the breathing Yeah. because you could, you know, like one thing was messing me up big time is on our last day when we were packing that Ram out, I kept, so I told you, I went without the sticks, Daniel. We've been like dedicated trekking pole guys. Yeah. So Chad doesn't use trekking poles. And I was like, well, I'm going to try and like not use them because I've like never not used them. So I kind of liked it in certain situations because there was a lot of times where we were four buying and like lean in and putting your hand out. And I just, the sticks are always like dangling and like I didn't like that. So I went without them. But what I was doing is we would get clipping along and I'd stop for a break and I would like, and I know better. I played football. When you're out of breath, you like stop and put your arms up. Yeah, don't hunch over. And hunt, you don't hunch chest, over, yeah. but I was hunching over to take the weight off my shoulders and just off everything for a second 
to let it like roll forward mm-hmm. and hang. Yeah. And then I would stand up and I would be like, Whoa. I could feel like that lightheaded. Yeah. Not like the point where I was going to faint or yeah. fall over, but it was just like, if I stayed hunched over for an extended period of time, it could become a problem. Oh, totally. With some, with some like air circulation or whatever. And I would like do it and I would know I was like, I can only do it for like 10 seconds of relief and then get up. Cause then I had to like suck that air back in and mm. balance it all back out. But I never really noticed that before. Cause what we've done in the past <clears throat> with the trekking poles is you can like put the trekking poles down and then like lean like on them. Mm-hmm. So instead of like, like when you're skiing, yeah. yeah. Instead yeah. of pinching your stomach and then like your airway, it's like you, you just like have it in your chest. Yeah. You know, just like, you're like leaning on it. So it doesn't like, completely restrict the airflow as much and so that was what i was kind of like missing on on the poles because i took them out the first day but i ditched them after that i was like man i don't really want these poles because we kept side hilling all the time and like needing to reach and grab yeah. rocks and stuff and i was like no nah, i don't want to i don't want to use spider man i mean you know it's just like I don't know. It trek was, and poles it are, just vert dude trek and poles are really nice when you're coming down with weight like yeah that, for me yeah. that's like the time they're there for and the rest of the time it's just like there's some about like having to be aware of your balance and not relying on the trekking mm-hmm. pole because there's so many times that you're like you're side hilling or whatever with the trekking pole it's like oh i got this set this down but you would never have that normally that balance and like that sure-footedness mm-hmm. and so it like gives you this like false sense of security in the mountains so I'm a huge fan of trekking and poles. I carry them, but I only use them like usually only with weight mm-hmm. and, and down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt discombobulated when we went up that morning the and I didn't ridge. have the yeah. poles because I become so adapted to having like those three points of contact all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to put too much pressure on my knee. Yeah. You have well, an injury. That's a different deal. So yeah. to me, it's just like it actually puts weight off my knee. Yeah. You know, and especially when I'm, especially when I'm going down, you know, but I've yeah. become really relying on that. And I'll, I'll even like, sh- if I'm going to side hill up, I'll like shorten the inside mountain yeah, one yeah. and then lengthen mm-hmm. the other mm-hmm. ones. So I could be like, and definitely down the same way. Yeah. And those things can hold some amazing like weight. Oh yeah. Like I've had times where I'm just like, oh, yeah. They're tolerant. 200 pounds on there. It's just like, or you wedge them in a rock and they like, you can hear them kind of like, Oh, but then the they worst. don't snap, but they like, they're like, oh man, it didn't break. Thank God. But that it does that a hundred times. Off, dude, when I do that and it's stuck and you just want to oh, yeah. <clears throat> get this yeah, thing out of there, dude. Yeah. Like, stupid thing. Well, one of the things I was noticing that I, I really never paid attention to before, but I was actually exerting maybe, maybe not, but I was thinking I was exerting a lot of energy, pulling the goddamn things out of the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I'm like, it's like one thing if you're like, you're just like picking, 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 picking. When it's like digging in, and you're just like, yeah, you're actually like exerting energy, to like to pull, pull the damn things out and then stick them in, and then like, because I'm thinking like you spread the energy through like uppers, lowers instead of just like all legs. Well, I decided to go a full day without the sticks, and I was kind of like to Jack's point, like I found my balance and my legs, and then my hands were like more free, and then I was kind of like, then I was watching chad and he kept like grabbing his pack and like kind of like holding it like this that's what jack was doing yeah, yeah and i was like oh okay like that actually like pulls some relief and like it, I don't it know. like center balances you it does. that time yeah I was what, doing what, that what too. do you find chad because like i felt like some weird relief i, I, I do it that. like i do it because i snowboard like that oh like a lot of people have like their arms out like nate snowboards with his arms out like i can i can pick him out on the mountain if he wore someone else's outfit <laughs> just by his stance his and stance, his style yeah, right. and i am like hands in yeah like i find my balance like in here yeah better than my arms out like i'm not i don't like to use my upper body to mm. balance so that's why i'm holding my straps it's not so much that i'm relieving because yeah the way i run my backpack like my shoulder straps are pretty loose anyway yeah like your bag is weights, way loose all on the you. weights on my yeah hip, on your hips on the hips yep mm-hmm. and so like i just use that to like kind of get rid of some of that looseness and then my arms are in and then i have more balance that way yep. and, and my thing is like i'm like you like i don't like that false sense of security yeah. that, like this thing's gonna save me because when it doesn't that oh. fall is gonna be like 
Oh yeah. Accentuated. Gnarly. Yeah. Like more than it would have been had I not been like reaching way out with a pole. Yeah. And yeah. So, but, but when we were going down and my feet were just, yeah, my ankles were hurting. I was wishing I had pulled. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I know a lot of dudes swear by them, and I told what I told you, man, is like, yeah, I cannot handle that damn tink, tink. Yeah. Oh, tink. that was it. Because to me, I've seen like you can start a rock slide and sheep will like look at it. They don't care. Yeah, but that is a that's a human sound. Yeah, it's a mm. different sound. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I ha I just know they have to key into it. Yeah, and so mm. it like. So I go back and forth with them, but I did try them once and I, yeah, I felt like, I felt like it was too much where I, like, I'm going to rely on this and mm -hmm. it's going to come out bad for me. Yeah. So the pair that I use is, um, has like the rubber thinner, smaller stopper. So it doesn't make the metal pair the sound and oh, it so doesn't, the points like it, do, it doesn't have metal. So yeah. Okay. And it's shorter and a little fatter. So it doesn't stick in the ground. Like you're talking oh, about. It's more like a little foot instead of a point. Yeah. It's a little point, but like if you stick it in the ground, it's not going to hold itself up. Mm. So you don't have the problem Brandon, like with it pulling it out and you don't have the tink thing, but they're like the ultra light ones. They don't have like the adjustable sides. It has, um, like a tension strap that you can, it's like, uh, a cord you're pulling against and then it locks in place. And if you want it shorter, like what Daniel's talking about, you can just undo the tension and it'll still hold its form. Okay. So you can have the shorter one and the upper one, but they weigh like half of Jack, the clip take a look ones. Up here. What are we looking at? If you go to Black Diamond, you can see both mine and uh, Daniel's because they're both Black Diamond. Okay. I have the Black Diamonds too. So yeah, yeah. So mine are <clears throat> that point down there, which is just digs in and like, which is good and bad. You know, it's really good if you want them to stand up right on their own. Yeah. Yeah. If you're trying to dry out your yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like mine, mine won't stand up on their own. But what's really good about my pair is like for like someone like you, Chad, that like isn't going to use them during the day because that's typically my style. Mm -hmm. I used them probably half the time this time, which is more than I would normally have. Um, they don't weigh anything. So they don't weigh anything. And you put them half. on your backpacks. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be great for like loaded and going downhill yeah. for sure. I was trying to find like a good image of them. Like what? I got to go to their page. I guess so. Yeah. Well, another thing too, Chad, I was like, when you said you're like, ah, I can't stand the sound of them. And I was like, I'm completely numb because, you know, I, I've been out with Daniel and Cisco. Scott came with us last year. We're all trucking pulled up and we're just like forever, you know. And then, like, I got up there with Chad and I'm like. I thought about it when I made the comment because I was like, we literally uh, like barely know each other and we're on this trip and I just like totally just shit on his track and like, pulls and now he's like going to be mm, super conscious about like, I was, dude. damn it, I was. Ah. I was like, I didn't mean it like that. Like, I was like, you should Well, I, and I went through my day with them and then I was like, we got to the top and I'm like, I kind of feel like this is where we need to be extra quiet. So then I packed them up for the whole day. Yeah. And then I'm like, forgot about them i just forgot about them you yeah. know i was like i don't even need these right now but then like coming down with a bunch of weight when we got down we ended up getting out like and i'm kind of jumping all over like right before dark it fogged in we kind of lost track of our tent and so we were like doing a lot of extra hiking around and some shit that we didn't want to be doing because we we're already clapped out and at that time, though, I wish I would have come down with my poles because I was so exhausted. Oh, yeah. My mm -hmm. knees and ankles, dude, my ankles were just like rubber bands, dude. Yeah. They were just trying to roll. Thank God those Krispies kept my ankles, like, supported. <laughs> it was just like, gonk, gonk, gonk. Like, hyperextended knees are trying to go. I'm like, man, it's time to find the tent, dude, because these... You get sloppy. Got, oh, I mean, I, I, I was getting sloppy, and I got it under control, but then I lost control. I could not stop the sloppiness. I was like, I'm so tired now. That, that even mentally willing yourself through not doing that, you're just like want to get back so bad that you just, you know, you forget. Like, like it just, ah, yeah. <laughs> but that's where the pulls come in handy, though. They can kind of like help you catch some of those slip ups and, yeah. and prevent an injury, you know. So yeah. they have their place. And um, now they kind of make an annoying sound chad you're not lying well they, they have the little caps <laughs> and the little rubber things yeah. you can put on them yeah no i mean i i <clears throat> never even thought about that i i always 
figured though that that kind of shit wouldn't hold up. Like like the tip break off or something, yeah, or fall off or like whatever. I mean, I don't know, but give it a shot. I I think they have their place for coming down with weight, crossing a lot of water crossings. Water crossings, I think, are critical. Yeah, I think that's where you really need poles when you're crossing something. You need to like poke and make sure there's like. You know, is that three feet of water or six inches of water? What is that? It's or like, glaciated streams. Yeah, something that's real milky or, or, or silty or something. Or something that jump, jump a little bit. And just, yeah, just pole vault it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You and definitely then, do that. And they're not that bad to carry. I mean, I carried mine for the most part, and I don't know. I'm, I've become very wrong. adapted to them. I mean, they help me tremendously. Well, you got the knee thing with, and with the like, knee. any yeah, kind of like yeah. ankle injury or knee injury or. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's overweight. the thing about it, man. It's it's whatever. Like everyone's feet are different. Everyone's body types different. Everyone's like one backpack's backpack's gonna fit someone better than another backpack. Like it's nothing's like no one can tell anyone exactly what to use. And if it works better for you, and and like I told him, like there was times where I was like, I was like Brandon, like you gotta speak up because I have like a super bad habit of being real greedy with altitude. Like once I gain altitude, I don't like to give it back. So yeah. like, I will side hill and and contour the mountain rather than like going down to go back up. Like yep. I do not like to go down to go back up. And it's some sometimes it's great and sometimes it's a bad habit. And sometimes with partners, like with Nate, like we. I mean, we've known each other for 30 years, so, like, we barely even have to speak when we're hunting. And I know what he's comfortable with and what, and he knows what I'm comfortable with. But when you have, like, new people, I don't, like, I was, like, safety is first. So, like, if poles is what you need to be the most secure on the mountain, then that's exactly what you should use. Yeah. Who cares mm -hmm. what sound it makes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, like, you can't. Someone gets hurt, it's over for both of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, every I, I, step has to be deliberate. That's what I preach. Like every man, step that has rang, to be that rang so home when you mentioned that because we spent like our first day rained out in the tent, laying in the tent. Like Far, we, got, we got up at seven o'clock in the morning, six thirty in the morning, and it was like, oh, okay, <sighs> okay. We stepped out, took a piss, got back in. It was like looking at the forecast on the inReach, it was like. Damn, we ain't getting out of here till like maybe seven o'clock tonight. So, all right, well, let's hang out and, you know, enjoy some herbs and hang out and get to know each other. So that's what we did, man. We just sat there and bullshit. And it was, <clears throat> it was really cool because like, how often do you get an opportunity to like do that? And, and we didn't know it, like, like backtrack real quick. If we want to talk about our hunt, you know, long story short on the beginning end, my sheep hunt blew up, Chad's sheep hunt blew up. Chad reaches out to Daniel. He's like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, I'm on the road going sheep hunting. Chad, I think, is like called dude number three, like to try and, or I think, right? Or well, maybe I was just like, yeah. My, running down my the hunt, list. My like, hunt blew up. And I'm just like, reach out. He's like, you should call my boy Brandon. And I was like, what happened? He's like, his hunt blew up. I was like, send me his number. <laughs> just and he like was, that. I called him and he was like, I'm in. I was like, perfect yeah <laughs> my wife will be super happy that i'm not mine going too alone. mine too i was yeah, like well right. oh, yours will be ex yours, yours will be stressed out about you going solo mine too and she knows who you are she knows your wife so i was like a good little connect well then you know he picks me up we had a great like monday afternoon he picked me up kind of mid-afternoon he already had everything packed all you had to do is pick me up and we rolled and we talked the whole way out and then uh you know we had a awesome ride in and then we get in and we're like gonna go hunt and then we're like no you're not gonna go hunt you're gonna sit in the tent all and that's day that's opening long. day opening day yeah we, i mean yeah. we couldn't see anything. it was just fog yeah fog like the rain. rain was whatever but you could it deal was, with that yeah couldn't glass anything yeah. so it was like well, yeah we're pinned in yeah so we just bullshit and it was like the perfect like segue into like this is what I do. This is what I do. Share a story. Talk about your hunting buddies. There's like, D -d 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 -d. and so we just bullshitted for days on end. And it was like, ah, oh, cool. Like, I think he got a good feel for me. I got a good feel for him. And then like, he's like, these are some of my isms. I'm like, these are some of my isms. And it was like, all right, cool. And like, my boy does this. Well, my boy does that. And I was like, oh, well, this is kind of <laughs> like really similar. And, uh, of course, he has a shit ton of experience in the mountains um, over the last decade and, and hunting sheep and the wrangles. And, and I'm kind of, I think we're like, what, if you're five into really mountain hunting, 
six, five, six, something five, like six, you know, and feeling good about experience. But it's always cool to go with somebody new that has done some different things. Use some different. Well, the equipment. thing is, is we learn on our own. We never went with anyone more experienced than us. Right. Yeah. We never <clears> had so like we just one learned, person. Like, yeah. No one ever told us anything about anything. We just figured it out. Yeah. yeah. Trial and error. Yeah. Google, some YouTube, following some hunters on TV. That only gets you so far until you actually put boots on the mountain, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Until you actually pack a pack and try a sleeping bag and try dehydrated meals and tarps and air pads. And we were talking about air pads. Like, as soon as he, we got in the tent, he rolled out his air pad. I was like, we had the same exact meal nice. or the, uh, the Thermarest. Uh, is it the Neo Air? Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, I think Jack's I in the market like, for that Neo Air. Yeah. I was like, yes. I was like, I'm fucking Dude, in Because I, yeah. I, knew, I knew he yeah. had the shit. He had the legit gear. He like, Everything he had was good gear, and I feel like I do too, but we rolled that. I was like, all right, all right, all right. Well, we got, we got this, some Come. of the same shit, so like, obviously it works. And he's like, yeah, I've had this thing for like six or seven years. I'm like, me too. All right, cool, man. So it just started adding up. And so before we actually really legitimately put – a pack on and boots and hit the mountain. We had a full day to like kick it, get to know each other, talk, family, yeah. friends, um, you know, relationships, history, hunting stories. It was like badass to just get to like kind of bond with some brand, kind of brand new dude. We brand only new. hung out a couple yeah. times. Brand new. And, uh, and Chad's like cool as shit. He's got a cool history. He's got tons of connections. He's like a really cool, like hip dude and i'm kind of like getting out of my circle a little more over the last few years and getting to know more new people i've talked to you guys about that a lot it's been awesome you know expanding your network out and getting to know yeah. more people and uh anyway man so we hit the mountain man it was like really comfortable it was like yeah. i felt like this dude's looking out for me i'm looking out for him we both want to get home to our families we both really want to get some sheep or like see some sheep or just get after it and so um, man, it was badass. Like our start couldn't have been any better. I thought the way that well, that went down. Yeah, because I mean, we like we realized that like I think we have a lot of the same like ideologies about like life in general, but also just like in the outdoor space. Mm. Like I think like well said. The importance was on both of us is like just being there, and like mm. the journey is the destination versus like the sheep. Yep. and the kill and all that like i think we both realized and and i could tell like right out of the gate which is the it's the most important trait that you're gonna find in someone that you can get along with on a hunt and that is like positive attitude mm. like pma 100 yep. percent positive mental attitude is the most important i don't care how billy badass you are how strong you are that you win mount marathon every year like none of that matters when you get out there because like everything that can go wrong is probably going to go wrong there's going to be some miserable weather there's going to be something that makes it uncomfortable and people that are just positive it just like it just takes all that away yeah that's and you're right. just like yeah. we're good and then and then knowing that like you're going to be like, if we come out of here and we don't get anything, like, you're going to be like still just as stoked oh, yeah, for sure. about the trip. And yeah. that's like an important yeah. thing to me because that's like what the mountains are about. Like it's completely my church, hundred percent. Mm, mm -hmm. Like that's where like you can't, I can't get any closer to whatever celestial being you want to choose for. <laughs> that's right. Wherever your upbringing is like, that's, it for me yeah yeah you really find yourself out there you know with your with a with a partner with multiple partners but you have moments where you're you're kind of out there and you know you're in the element and you know those mountains don't care about you they don't care about you the weather doesn't care about you none of that stuff cares about you but if you understand that and you're comfortable in that and you just relish that like raw feeling of what all that is that that fresh air and those high mountains and that bad weather and being with a positive person that's like you know reinforcing we're gonna be good or we're gonna see something or you know and it's just like man it's a, it's such a, a a mental place that you can never be in your normal grind of life yeah you know what i mean like it just is like a 
Well, because like your everyday life is like it's like there's so much of it that's just like it's not really real. It's like facades and like, you know relationships and networking and all that. Like it's super important, and it's how I've gotten anywhere in my life. Because like when you don't have a ton of talent, like you gotta rely on networking. So. But that being said, like, I don't know about the there's, talent there's so chat. much bullshit in, like, <laughs> everything. And just, like, er, like no one's being 100% real with you all the time. Out there, the mountains, <laughs> like, they don't lie. They tell you the truth. They let you know exactly who you are and how small you are. That's and right. how, like, minimal you are in this Miniscule. existence. Yeah. Like, this you are, like, place. nothing but a speck of, like, dust. Yeah, you're just an organism out there like any other yeah. caterpillar, bug. And sometimes bird or you plant, need, sometimes you, know? you need, sometimes they'll like give you everything that you need and they'll also like just punch you in the throat when you need it. Yep. If you're acting out, they'll be like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and you'll find like true colors of people come out. Oh, yeah. When you're out in the woods too. Oh, yeah. Like well, uh, that positive <clears throat> mental attitude is mm-hmm. highly important. Yeah, and it's not an easy thing to maintain. Like, my air pad's leaking. My boot's wet. My yeah. foot's blistered. Uh, my scope's fogged. Um, my dehydrated meal that I brought sucked. I thought yeah. it was going to be really good. I um, didn't fully rehydrate. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, there's these things that, like, can build up to just, like, wow, nothing's going right today or nothing's going right for this hour. And it's, like... That can turn you into what we talk about, like uh, like the Snickers commercial. Like, oh, dude, yeah. man, are you hungry, bro? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> turn into that diva real quick, real quick dude. Like, <laughs> it doesn't Betty. take long. Exactly, man. Yeah. You can just like start showing your ass, and then your homie's like, "Yo, dude, man, like, yeah." Y'all good over there? It's like, yeah, I am. I'm good. Sorry. I lost it there for a second. <laughs> Next step. Let's keep going. Next yeah. step. Let's get make let's make it right. Yeah, over there. man. But you you said that. I like that. You said that every step was deliberate, man. That was it has to be because the ro- shit, a rolled ankle dude. ends, yes. ends, the ends whole everything, man. Well, That's let right. me speak on that a little bit because we, we, we talked about this on our trip. Yeah. And in the end, we we did this push out that's a little more than I like to do in a day. Mm-hmm. And I, and I was telling Jack, I was like, I'll be able to do it. Like I, I'll get in my head. Like I'm going to do this. And then he's like asking me this stuff and, and ask, and like some people like to talk in order to like get by it. And, and I'm like, and I had to tell Jack, I was like, I need to really like focus and think about when every step I'm doing, because I'm already past the point of where I like to stop. And so I need right. to focus on every single step, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Get and in the I'm, zone. Yes. And if I'm thinking about a question or something else, like then I'm not focusing on every single step. Yeah. So you're like, oh, okay, stop talking to me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say here. Like, don't talk to me no more. Just leave yeah, me yeah. in my silence yeah. and my misery. No, but I let him because that's what he needed. Yeah, you need to be but, able to talk to get through that that area. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. You needed to you talk to for your own yeah. your own mindset. You yep. know what I'm saying? And I knew that. You know what I'm saying? So I would still respond, but in my own head, I was just like, I need to focus on what I'm doing here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because so I don't like want in to. In and out of the conversation. like Yeah, and I kind of felt bad, do. and I think I apologized too. You, no, yeah, you <clears throat> mentioned it at the end. But you were good. Like, I understood it, and I was okay with you not responding. So I'm like you. Like, I like being in my own head. But what we were coming down was a trail that we'll probably post pictures on that looks like flat top. Like, it looks like a hiking trail. Oh, but this like is game in, trail. It, this that is the, the game trail for this whole area, and it goes down this creek. It goes over a pass, which I was cool with. But then, as soon as we hit the like head high willows, like we have mm. to talk. And there's a creek running there's, down there, and mm. it is wide. And mm. the one thing I don't want to do on a trip like that is surprise a, like a bear. Yeah. And and it was like I don't want to talk either. I want to be in my own head. I want to do my own thing and have that mindfulness. But part of being mindful in my scenario was like, okay, well, I'm going to talk. If Daniel wants to reply, he can. But I'm going to talk loud and I'm going to talk often Just keep talking. through this stretch. And so we, we ended up having to do four miles through basically like the, the mega highway through this tiny creek, creek bottom that was probably 50 yards wide. This head high brush. Yeah. 
mm. the whole way. And the trail literally looks like the sunny side of flat top. Like it is from the top. I was Just like, there's down. a four wheeler trailer trail down there. And then when we hit it, it wasn't a four wheel trailer. It was all game. It was, it was yeah. the mega highway. And you see every track. Yeah, oh, you okay. just don't know. You can turn this corner, and who knows what else yeah. is on this trail coming towards you. And then the creeks like the rolling, right? Like so it's like you have funneled. to be loud all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you're basically like the start of every story in Alaska Bear Tales. Totally. So there I was, <laughs> yeah, in head high yeah. grass, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, <laughs> being totally quiet. And then I got attacked by bears. So yeah. you're like, no, we're not going to fall. Yeah. yeah. But you did, you. You, you did apologize and, uh, but you should, you didn't have to, because I was going to talk no matter what, that was my thing. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. but it was funny. I was asking you questions like, what's your favorite beer? I know what every one of your favorite beers are. And yeah. the answers weren't even your normal favorite beer. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what did I say? I said like Bud Light or something <laughs> weird. I was just like, get, don't said, ask me. You said Guinness. You were <laughs> no, like I said Guinness. Guinness. So I was like, I've never seen Dale with a Guinness. I know Dale forever. Like, this is <laughs> I was like, what's your favorite cider? And yeah. you're like, fuck you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't we didn't get jumped by one of those guys. And we and right That's in that good, area man. we saw a sal on two cubs uh, a few days earlier. So mm. but Yeah, it goes back to that. Like when you're really tired and you're sloppy and you know mm-hmm. that you're sloppy, yeah. that's when you need to be even more mindful yeah. of yeah. Really focused. Really focused, yeah. Really you know? focused, yeah. Fatigue, man, that's where all your injuries happen almost. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No one gets hurt in the middle of the day. It's the end of the day. That's right. Yeah. Well, it we, is. It is. It is. Like, going back to the trekking poles, like, I was wishing I had them when we were coming down there. Because you do get yeah. sloppy, and you, like, you have one slip, and you got to, like, take a couple non-deliberate steps. And every time that happens, I'm, like, mad at myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, like, you kind of, like, get you pissed. You can't stumble, dude. Like, yeah. you can't. You got way too much weight on your back. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just waiting to injure yourself because that's all it takes one little uh, 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 like there's your back yeah there's your knee there's your ankle and the upside of that first day is like i i thought we're good on getting hydrated so i was drinking lots of water drink coffee you know we were just kind of like drinking water all day or sipping on you know scratches and we're mixing stuff and drinking stuff and we get up there, man and like in classic fashion what does brandon always fucking do in day one he cramps up Right quad, vertical muscle, whatever that thing is right here, just goes full C's. And I'm like, I don't, I, Chad keeps being like the vocal, hey man, if you got anything, let me know, let me know, let me know. And I'm like, ah, this goddamn cramp came, you know, I'm like, ah, I'm gonna just kind of like, so he caught me like sitting on a rock real quick, doing a quick massage out of it. And then he's like, you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. I was like, I just got a little cramp going on. And he busts out these like salt tablets. And I'm, he's got first off, okay, so he's a Kafaru guy. Kafaru? Kafaru? Kafaru. Kafaru. Yeah. And he's got a pack very similar to uh, Jake's, mm-hmm. um, where they got the modular middle with the flaps on the side, and his pack is dope. But he's got the side pouches. Like, Kafaru's got all the accessory oh, bags yeah. to add to everything to make him badass. So he's got this little side pouch, and I'm like, he's got this like little tiny fanny pack thing that's like dope, and he's got all of his goodies in there. All of his salt tablets, snacks, mixes for his water. And I'm like, bing, like took that one straight to the dome. Like that one ain't leaving me. Like I'm going to have that little kit. I don't care if it's a Ziploc bag or something somewhere. So yeah. he busts out these salt tablets. He's like, yo, eat these every 15 to 30 minutes. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, all right, man. So I start pounding them, you know, three, three sets in 45 minutes later, cramps gone. And yeah. I'm like, bam. So it was really cool. Like, man, I was learning something new, like. Every like couple hours of the day is like some little tidbit, and uh, the, I'll never, never go without those salt tablets, dude. What right? are they? Electrolyte tablets, basically. Like yeah. noon, yeah. or what do you what do you do? No, not the, the none. Is that what it is? is yeah, it's called n- noon. No, I call it noon, but none noon. Whatever. No, not those. Like these are just tabs that you just eat. Okay. And then like they're they're like salt, but they have like they you can get like watermelon flavor, strawberry right, right, flavor, right, right. whatever, and. REI has them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're money just for like, I, I try to do, like I do those noons or nuns or yeah, whatever yeah. they're called. I do those. And I do actually the uh, Costco, the liquid IVs. Yeah, I love liquid IVs. Pretty right brought them you up two there. boys will come up with, dude, the jackhead every <clears throat> little. I don't know if there's, oh, yeah, that's no, probably that's the best like to mix with your drink. Because those nuns like fizz up. 
Right, and right. They kind of make my drink taste weird. Yep. And the liquid IVs don't. So I really yep. like those to like put in my water bag. Right. But then I don't, sometimes when right you here, need Chad. a little extra boost. Yeah, so those. Salt like sticks. to the tea. So, fast juice. So the thing with the, um, the liquid IV is it has the sugar. Yeah. And that sugar transmits that. It helps you rehydrate like way faster than yeah. the noon. It's like the, the carrier. The noon is really good for like being preemptive on your hydration, yeah, which I think. Is not me ever. It, yeah. Um, what what other supplements do you use when you're up there? Um not so much supplements. That's a, probably the only supplement that I take. Well, Although you have the peanut did, butter packs and you had like oh, a little, I do those. the goo packs yeah. and like all that stuff. I've heard of that, but I was never really into well, no, it. No, like what I normally have, I didn't have. We talked about this oh, all we did. weekend. Dude, what about the jelly my boy beans? Aaron oh, screwed my me over. Daniel, COVID Daniel, screwed Daniel, me again. Right <laughs> Aaron was like, he was like, dude, I ordered a case of those like energy jelly bellies that you love. Oh, yeah. He's like, so don't buy any. So I didn't, and then he's the one that couldn't go on the hunt. Uh, so I didn't have any on this hunt, and like I crushed those like all day. Those sport beans, or whatever yeah, yeah, called. yeah, yeah. Like I use those a lot, yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. like candy. They make you feel good, and yeah. they got like some energy in them. They have caffeine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like the caffeine. Sport beans. Yeah, yeah. Those. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, you see all this stuff when you go to REI or something or Barney's, and you're like, I don't know, dude. Like this is like dick pill shit or what do we got going on here <laughs> the thing that and, and then you see this guy using it and this guy using it and i was like i've never i was like let me try see, it that's the difference. Just whatever small oh. and can give you that like 100 calories at a yeah. time that you can eat and it doesn't like my problem is like when you're working that hard it's hard to eat yeah but you don't because, want like a meal or because anything, it's hard right? to be full and like yeah just be that stressed of yeah. like yeah, I can only eat like half a bar when we're going yeah, hard. Like bars, I just have like a bite or two. That's you know? why I've like, gone to those peanut butter and almond butter, like the Justin's so almond good. butter packs. Yep. Or yeah, and then now just suck um, them down and go. I had this time. The, there's yeah. a the the black one that that has like cashew, almond, macadamia nut. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of the name. Fat, of it. Is it a fat bomb. Maybe. That's a good thing too, but they don't carry it anywhere. You got to order it. Yeah, this They're one called I fat ordered. bombs. They're black. Mm, those things are money. Yeah. Mm, the, fat bombs. the one thing that I bring that isn't on this and you can't buy it or it is that athletic greens, dude. That shit comes. Oh, through. yeah. The, I love the that. mixes. Yeah. The like pouches. Yeah. So you much. mixing your yeah. water then or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just in the morning and crush it. Yeah. Oh. And I, I drink one of those every day anyway, but on the hunt, dude, I could just feel the difference the days that I forgot it. And Daniel's just sitting over there laughing at me. When no, I'm like, I got my greens. That's for after. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, athletic, athletic, athletic greens is an amazing brand. Yeah. And like so good for your gut health. So yeah, totally mm, good for gut health. Keep things going. Yeah. 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 Super important. Which is okay. important for me because I'm dropping those pills in my water. Like I, we, Daniel brought the sterile pen, but I usually don't use the steri pen. I usually use the pills, which kills all your good gut. I have mm. a steri pen and I've never used it. I never used it till I bought it this time because I, I didn't know the area we're going in. Normally the Brooks Rains were just drinking that water. It's in my kit. I just have never. And I've drank we used it and it's mm-hmm. very efficient. I mean, oh, right. was it nasty? No, that thing is amazing, dude. Like the Steri iodine pill? No, no, no. no. Oh, the Steri the oh, light. Yeah. UV light. Oh. Yeah. I was, so I went and bought that thing. I've been wanting it just for like river stuff, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just to have it. And, you know, you were doing the pills, and I don't like that flavor of the pill. I haven't had a drink of well, yet, the but pills I mean, is like, I those are like suck. meant for like super nasty water. Yeah. 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 Super like nasty. Right I heard you, you, you shouldn't really be drinking that a lot. Those pills, like yeah, I not just read something that's not, not really not, good, yeah, for it's you. Not good for you. So I was like, well, let me try that stereo pen. I got that green one there, the ultra. This one here? No, to that's the left. What I have. The little yep. small, the smallest one they have, all the way there. That is the Catadin. Yep, that's what I have. And, and it's just like oh. sixteen ounces at a time. Yep, it worked awesome. It yeah. I didn't I charged it the f- before I left, and it did the whole time. It did. I don't know multiple. I mean, I never seen anyone drink more water than Jack. I mean, this guy drinks like gallons of water a day. 
That's smart. And I'm yeah, like, I can't drink any more water. I'm just like, Ugh. we're yeah, gonna climb over up. this saddle. Daniel like filled up his little Nalgene. I was like, hey, uh, you know, I'm gonna fill up both my Nalgenes, and then can I fill up your three liter thing? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna carry it, I was like, of course. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not <laughs> drinking all that. There. I'm drinking like, all this water <laughs> and for sure. I run a three liter all. and I crush a three liter a day yeah. for oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I need to drink more water. Yeah, but that Sterry Pen works legit, dude. It's the only way you're gonna drink more though is if you put it in you gotta have the hose. So I or bought this Stone Glacier little water bottle holster, and that thing is money. It uh, holds you could put it on your Kafaro, but it just sits right there at the perfect spot where it doesn't fuck with your belt. But I could pull it out while I'm walking, chug it and put it right back. Yeah, that works. Mm. Like you got it, but it has to be like I like the hose. It's, I like I the yeah, platypus. I do, the hose. I do the hose. I do the hose. And I know that's, you know, two or three liters in there, and I'm going to be good all the mm-hmm. way up and over. I feel it. Although the other day, man, dude. I didn't feel you it. Missed I, the I think I failed you, dude. I, I filled I, it I, halfway because he was kind of doing that, and I was like, oh, I'll try that. We are having water super high, and then I just forgot to get the water up high. Yeah. yeah. And then when we were packing out, like, as soon as we started to go up, loaded up with the sheep. Like I went to suck on mine. And you just like, know what it's done. And I just thought, I was like, oh, it's just like I have my pack too cinched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it's not. It's cut off. Yeah, it's cut off. Yeah. And then we got back to camp and I pulled it out and it was bone. And oh. I was like, nope, that was me. I was <laughs> like, oh, dude, I didn't. He's like, you didn't fill it all the way. And I was like, oh, I didn't. I so you were like, like I we'll get water up high. And I was like, uh, all right, all right. And then I was like, ah, I failed you, man. I could have like reminded you to get your water because there was like, there was water up there, but it was kind of like pooled up on top, and it was more like melted snow. Sure. It's like trickles. You could have yeah. drank it. It wasn't going to make you sick, I don't think. No. But, uh, Absolutely. But I, you know, again, we're like certain things we've done because we've where we've gone with water situations. Like, I just fill that three liter and like, you know, suck it, fucking drop, walking up, and it sucks, man. It sucks because it's heavy. Like that pack, like you can feel the difference when you suck two liters out of it and then throw your pack on. It's like, oh, hey. Well, yeah, on the way up, Jack, I was like, if you're going to carry it, he's like, I feel way heavier with this water. Yeah, you just put three liters on your back. Yeah. 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 What's the weight of it? It was like six pounds. Yeah, that would have been six pounds. Plus, I added the tent. So it was yeah. 11 pounds. Mm. Yeah, you did. 11 pounds time. more than the Jack previous. Was like, I got this. Yeah, it was no problem. It just took a little yeah. bit to get used to that extra weight there. And I thought you had like some dialed, uh, Chad, I thought you had some dialed, like, you know, you knew how many sips you could get out of that liters of water. Nope. That nope. no, it's got a clicker. <laughs> so he was like, he was like, yeah, I'm not filling up. I don't want to carry all yeah, that. He up. was, and I was, he, like, was right. mm-hmm. thinking I'm like super organized and I'm not. And he found out day two <laughs> exactly how unorganized I am when he's like, he's like, dude, I think it's rad that you're bow hunting. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I guess we should just be fully candid now. Huh? I was like, I'm bow hunting. Cause I left my ammo in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm 100% bow hunting. Like, I don't even have to think about the choice. <laughs> like that gun is worthless. I was like, why? He's got oh, no. this, dude. He's got this badass <coughs> 800 wind mag, dude. Custom, like custom ish, five, 600 yard. You know, he shoots this thing like crazy. He's telling me all the way up. And I'm like, oh, man, he's a badass shooter. I'm like, cool. He's got the bow. I'm like, well, fuck. Hopefully I'll just carry his rifle and he'll carry his bow. And then I can leave my old, you know, 14 pound rifle in the truck. And so I like slipped it in the, in the boot and, we rally in there, and he just grabs his bow, and I'm like, oh, man, this, this fucking dude's badass. Like, he's just going to bow hunt for a sheep? I'm like, cool. We're going to be getting up close and personal then. That'll be fun. And so the whole time, I'm just like, man, kind of at awe. Like, oh, man, this this dude's got his Carfaro pack, and he's got this fancy, like, bow holder, and the way he's got it strapped on all pimp. And he comes down, and he's like, yeah, full disclosure, bro. I forgot my ammo. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's why your that's why your gun never came out. <laughs> Sometimes you need that to happen though to bring the bow out. Like you just oh, like man, leave it dude. like at the wheeler. I do at Moose Camp all the time, dude. It's just like I like force the issue down. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. And you just well, like yeah. need it. Yeah, and I'm not like I love the bow. I like I love shooting a bow, and I do like everything about it. But I'm not that guy who's like bow oh, you're, only if you shoot a right like i'm not like bow like, knows I'm, only bow yeah i'm just i'm just <laughs> yeah. a hunter and i'm gonna do whatever is i, I want to get something with a bow i really do yeah and i love shooting it but honestly i bought it because ammo's through the roof and i can't shoot as much as i want 
And I can shoot that bow at my house. Yeah, totally. There's yeah. probably it's a few therapeutic, neighbors dude. that think I'm weird, mm-hmm. but and you practice a lot. I mean, you, yeah. you say you put a lot of hours in. I was shooting every day all summer. Yeah, uh, just at my house, like you know, twenty yards. But yeah, and I would go to Kincaid and do some stuff. Oh, and then Kincaid's fun. I went out there and did like a little competition, which was super eye opening to <laughs> how good you're not. Really. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I also realized that like you shoot in a competition like 300 arrows in a day and i was like i was with this guy like we got put into groups and this me and this other kid were like he had just moved here he's like military guy he just literally got here this week and saw like the flyer so he showed up he's like i've never done this before i was like i've never done this before I was like, they'll probably put us together with someone who knows what they're doing. And they did. And it's this guy who's like, yeah, I'm the, like, national. He's like, I'm a nationally ranked shooter in, like, master's division. He's older. Great dude. Was giving us all kinds of insight. And he's, like, he's got, like, a six by multiplier on his site. And he's like, they shoot shoot big arrows because it's what your arrow is touching. If your arrow is touching the ring. You get that point. Yeah. Oh. Like it doesn't have to be inside the ring. So they all shoot like big, like huge, yeah. like cover, ten cover millimeter area. arrow shots. They're like huge. I hit all it's the like rings. a cigar compared <laughs> to like honey honey yeah, arrows, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like by halfway through, like, I'm like, I don't even want to pull my bow back totally. anymore. And that guy's like, What are you pulling? I was like, eighty two pounds. And he's like I was like, What are you pulling? Is that a competitive guy? He's like fifty? Yeah, I was like, uh, oh yeah. I was like, "What's your let off?" He's like, "It's like eighty nine percent." I was like, "Oh, well, that would make a difference." Yeah, totally. You're just like by the two hundred there. You're like, like, yeah. like, seriously, it was like hurting. To pull it back. Yeah. I was like, oh, "Good move, getting the eighty pound bow." Oh. Uh, you know, to your credit though, man. Like, so day one we're rained out. We get up at seven thirty. Uh, we get out of the tent at seven thirty that night. There's two young, what look pretty pretty clear to us. They're they're not legal rams, but they're still just up in our headwater valley. And we're like, oh, cool, good sign, right? Next morning, they're in the same spot. We don't want to blow them out, so we like traversed the side of this like lower foothill of this glacier moraine, and then we kind of like wrap around. And we're gonna do this like little like wrap around ramp up, and then try not to blow the sheep out. Well, Chad's route was epic. It was perfect. Wrapped around, came up. Didn't even, those sheep had no clue. They looked down and saw us walking around, but like never saw us when we actually hit the mountain mountain. So they were never even like disturbed. We get up on the ridge. <clears throat> it had snowed. We trek back and we see two rams around one edge of the bowl and then like down this valley and across, which we probably could hike to those if we really wanted it that day. Oh, sure. There were those three, which were like really low. Like they were surprisingly low. Well, He's got a badass scope. What, what, what scope do you have again? You've got the, the Koa. Koa 88. 88 millimeter. Yep. Man, dude. Like, it's a that's tank. That's the one that Scotty has, but it's not the 88. What's it's the he's one got the compact. It's lighter than uh, Suaro. It's, a, it's Suaro, Japan, yeah. Japan made. Um, yeah, Scotty glass. P has that. Scotty, he has the compact. Yeah, he's got the compact yeah, he one. That that's right, he did. Yeah. That's why I recognize that yeah, green color. I think they have like a 77 and a 66. They have like a weirder number. They're like one number. Everyone else is like. 65, 75. Yeah, they're, they're even 66. numbers. I think Swarrow's like goes to 90 then. So it's like comparable to their Swarrow's 90. Probably a thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah. At least, yeah, at that's what you were saying. Yeah. But I don't know. It's still 100% fluoride glass. I really like it. It's no, the, the that one I'm that we looked through of Scotty's was legit. Well, yeah. I mean, he looked across the valley. Those three rams were clearly like half curls. And I was like, well, we're not going to go. No point in walking over there. Yeah. The other two, on the other hand, were like, oh, well, those look like prospects. Like, eh, you know, not totally sure, but close. we see five Rams. These are the two. They're closest, and they look the closest to maybe legal. Maybe they're brewing. Maybe they're not. Let's get closer. So we make the trek over the top of the bowl. We get down on this uh, ledge. We're looking across. They're feeding. We can see them. So now Chad wants to do like a ridge reap all the way around. Well, Again, Chad doesn't like to lose elevation, so we did a whole lot of side hill and cliff rounding, which, you know, in our experience up in the brooks, like, we kind of just get on top, and it's just kind of, like, cruising, 
and then you can like dip behind skyline and you never yeah. really like your cliffs are like tiny little points or like little stretches, maybe 20, 30 yards where you kind of have to roll around some, some of these were like a 300 yards around or a hundred mm. yards around. They were long. So you had to like side hill kind of some like, I don't want to say sketchy shit. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't cause it was, it was like good traction and you could side hill it. It just, when, you know, when you, if you look down, it was like, it it's, sloped down like 200 I mean, yards and then it, it fell. Yeah. I mean, it, the, any I was going to say you didn't want to fall. It sketchy. It's yes. a no fall zone. Yeah. Don't fall. It's don't a fall. No if you fall, zone. you die. No, no, no. But I mean, if you like passed out and fell and just were like, yeah, dead if body you rolling, sailed, like, you're probably going to die. Yes. But if you slipped, like you can self arrest and you could slide, you dig in and grab. Up. And you it's, know, you, it just looks, it looks worse than it is when you get on it. Yeah. Like, you can't look at it and be like, oh, we can't get over there. Because that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, ooh, man, yeah, that looks like untouchable. He's like, no, 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 we'll just go up here and around. I'm like, oh, okay, Chad. And we get around and we're cruising. I'm like, oh, it's actually not that bad. I'm I like, have okay. to, like, I'm just that person, like, I have to, I have to see it. Like, I can't look at it through a scope or binoculars and, like, be looking over at another, like, ridge and, and, you're looking at it and you're looking two dimensional, right? Cause you're like looking through a scope and you're like, Oh, that looks impassable. And it's like so many times, like when you go like really like put your hands and feet on it, you're like, Oh no, this is, we can do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. Here's like a it's, route. It's, bur- yeah. it's yeah. a little burly and it's a little heavier and it's a little like, okay, focus, but it's totally doable. Right. Mm-hmm. And some, and, and I just feel like you got to go, you got to go and lay your hands on it in order to know for real. Or like, dig, I, hate, your toe I just in don't like looking out. at something and thinking like, I don't think we can get to him. Like, I hate, I hate already being negative about it. Well, it's not even the negativity. It's just the fact that like, if I walk away from that, like it's going to eat me up knowing that like, what if I could have got to that Ram and I just like talked myself out of it. And I don't even, I don't even really know the answer. Like, I just convinced myself that we shouldn't or we can't. And then you get over there, and you're like, oh, this isn't that bad. Yeah. And it looked like a lot of that looks. Like, even when I told Aaron when we got back and I told him where we got the ram, he was just like, he's like, dude, are you talking about that ridge that, like, has all those, like, cliff lines that look like you cannot get past them? I was like, yep, that's the one all the way to the end. Farthest to Literally. The farthest. end. Like say you walk the whole ridge. Yeah, well, you bowl. can't walk. The ridge is like so yeah. knifey, you can't. So oh, you're yeah, like no. so you're ducking under like, the little so yeah. cliffs and stuff. And around them. And, when and, you, stuff. and, yeah. and that's yeah. the thing is like when you're looking at it from far, unless it's like heavy, heavy sheep or caribou traffic, yeah. like you won't see those trails. Yeah, the little mm-hmm. ones. So you yeah. got to like get over there and then you see, like you notice. And that's the other thing that I look for more than anything yeah. mm-hmm. is where are they going? Because yeah. they are going the path of least resistance right. yep. always. Yep. Like those animals, like their whole life revolves around expending the least amount of energy as possible when they travel. That's right. So if you just stay on those and trust those trails, yeah. you know they'll get around stuff. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yep. They might like go up on a thing that's like, oh, like yep, that's for a couple seconds. It's only where they're off. gonna go, but you can like dip down and side hill some like shale and then come around. Yep. 20 yards later, you're back on their trail, yeah, or you're like above it or below it, or like you're in the general area of their least of path of least resistance, which in theory should be mm-hmm. as safe as it could be for a human at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're talking about the bow and we get. You know, we, we, we see these two rams, and then now we're like, all right, we're going to, like, round this this bowl. And it was probably, like, a 45-minute hike. We kind of go up this thing and around, and I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe we just, like, did all that. And I'm looking back, like, damn, that looked, like, daunting. Like, that didn't look, like, passable, and it wasn't that bad. So we get over on this point, and we look down, and I'm like, well, where the hell did the sheep go? They're like, like, what gone. the hell? Like, they're just, like, gone? Like, Okay, if they bounced, like we'd still see them over there or over there or somewhere. And I'm like, where the hell did they go, Chad? And he's like, dude, they, they can't just fucking disappear in the rocks. They they gotta like be around. So he's like, all right, we'll sit right here. I'm gonna throw a rock down here. He's like, see if they're like down below us. Whew, those rock clack. Sure as shit, those two rams pop right out from below us. 
they couldn't have been more nooked in under this. How big was that rock point, Chad? Like uh, maybe like fifteen feet. Wide. Yeah, tiny. It was dude. weird that they're under it. Like it was a perfect rock for them to sit on. Oh, yeah. And they were under with a green pad. Was the they had sun yeah. shining that direction. No. No. Huh. No. It was really no weird because they around. had they. We saw them bedded down. When we saw them, we saw them bedded down, and then we were watching them, and we were watching the other three rams, and then they started to feed, and then so we backed out and we went all the way around this peak, yeah, to come around them to get on the good wind, and then be above them, yeah. And when we got there, they just were like yeah. ghost, mm-hmm. and I was like, this valley is massive. The only exit, like we would see, unless they made us, which there's no way they did. Mm-mm. Like they, they wouldn't have smelled us. Like even if they saw us, they wouldn't just bolt. Yeah. Like they'll maybe be cautious and pay attention. Yeah. The like grams don't use, they don't, they don't disappear on vision much. They smell you, they're gone. Yeah. Or they hear you and don't see you. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. what, I, and then that's what we did with the rocks. And they were like, yep. we got them kind of confused for a second. So then I was like, all right. Go get set up with the scope and get on them where they're going to pop out again. And I'm going to get my bow ready. And then you're just going to need to tell me. Like, if oh, you're that late. close? Yeah. This oh, point, he I'm was like in bow range. 40 yards. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. No, he's him. on him. So it was an exciting moment for him to be like, yeah, I don't have my ammo. <laughs> it was like, all right. Well, in my mind, I'm like, cool. Well, Chad, this is kind of like your hunt. You know, initially, like, my thought is, like, I'm coming with Chad. He's going to get a ram. I'm going to support him. Maybe we'll get lucky and, and and get a double tap on two legals together, which happens. You saw Joe and Brett. I ran into them today, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I right after it. they sealed their rams. It was really cool. I got to see their <coughs> sheep and hold them and shit. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so we, like, get in position where he's, like, in legitimate bow range on these rams. I'm like, holy shit, we did it. Like, this is the first time I've been this close to what are two maybe potential legal rams, and he's got a bow, and so I'm just, like, going to be a bystander and just watch. So he sets me up, throws the rock, they pop out, and they're, like, 40 yards away, man. I got video on the phone. We'll we'll post some stuff on there. And uh, it was like, ah, Chad, man, I don't know, dude. Yeah. Like, he's looking at me like he's not drawn, but he's got his bow, and he's, like, he's over here, like, 20 yards away on the perched up. And they're looking down and I'm like, they popped out. So I'm like, you know, there's like the mountain. He's standing here. I'm down here. And they're like right there. So I'm like, "Ah, I don't know, Chad. Like, I can't, like, I can't make the call. Like, it's just too, like, they're moving around. They don't look official for sure. Like, they just weren't like. It wasn't obvious. Obvious obvious curls. Yeah. So then he throws another rock and he shucks them out. And then they go back and they'll bed down like what, like 130 yards away. Yep. yep. And then they give us a chance to actually like really scope them for a good hour. Yeah. And then determine. Yeah, I mean, the, you had your the, rifle on them, and we were I trying did. to like make the decision. And you were kind of like, "Well, what do you? What would you do?" And I was like, "I think we should just back out and leave them. Like it might be eight, but I don't know." But they yeah. weren't full curl. It was like real close. Yeah. 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 One of them was really close. They so. But it, but it was like too close. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, like yeah. they weren't heavy. Yeah. No. It was. There's like a picture of thinner, him right there, and, guys. And he had like a weird. He had a weird. I can't zoom it in. Like his horns like it. came. They were weird. Mm-hmm. Like actually, the the smaller guy of the two had a better looking horn set. Like this guy's came at a weird angle. Huh. Like instead of coming like up and out like mm-hmm. normal sheep, they kind of just like came down fast. Oh, like so corkscrewy. Like, yeah, it was real weird looking. Yeah, can't get a good zoom on them. But so I was looking at this one the whole time. Then I get it in the scope, and then Chad's talking about this one the whole time. So I'm like, oh shit, dude, we're like both looking at two different. Like I'm thinking this is the bigger one. He's telling me this is the bigger one, and I'm like, man. And so we then we got like a good 45 minutes just like staring at them, and then it was just like. When you've talked about it this long, it's like, yeah, it's time to leave. <laughs> it's time, it's time to like, like just call it. Yeah, so and, I was and, like, just let's back out and not blow them out. Yep. And then they'll be here. They're not going to leave this bowl. They'll be here. Yeah. And let's go try and find. And, and what I bigger. found was like the ultimate success and all that was like him and I hunting, like real hunting together for the first day and like, you know, using our instincts, communicating and like doing all that because we hadn't done it yet. 
And it really just going through the motions of it to me was a huge success. Like I text my wife that night and I was like, Hey babe, go back to camp or safe. She's like, awesome. How's your day? And I was like, actually it was awesome. It was like, we didn't shoot a ram, but we went through all the motions to the T as if you were going to take one, but we just didn't do it. Yeah. But it was like, wow, that was exhilarating. It was like, we got on them. We got in their sensory range. Yeah. They had no idea we were there. They saw us. We were still sneaky enough that we didn't blow them out. Like they got up three times and laid back down three times. Yeah. They were just all within and when shooting we left, range. They were sleeping. And it was like, man, just we snuck in on them. We rattled them up, we snuck out, and like completely unscathed. And that just, I was like, man, that was like just as fun. And you didn't have to like deal with the pack out, and you didn't yeah. have to deal with the, yeah, the actual you know, work the of whole it. work of it. Yeah. I was like, man, that was a lot of freaking fun. So we came back, and I'm just like pumped and high fiving and giving them knucks. And I'm like, bro, that was so awesome. Like, man, I had so much fun today cramped up got hurt broke myself in you know did that whole thing and then um you Tamped know we, over the hill and saw someone camp 300 yards away from our camp oh, <laughs> oh dude. really oh. yeah these guys Literally. man that we saw up in this other valley when we went up, when we went up when we got to elevation that morning we could see their camp we we're kind of watching them i was like is there a dude in that camp they're like oh they're standing around their tent it's like no one has a backpack on I was like wonder what they're doing it's like yesterday they couldn't move so uh, why are they not hunting? I was like, yeah, whatever. Go hunt, come back, and they're literally 300 yards from us. I come up the top, and he's like, you're going to love this. And I'm like, oh, shit, dude. They're like, our tent gets shredded by a bear or something. Yeah. I crest the hill, Even and I worse. see three tents. I'm like, why are they so fucking close, though? Like, I mean, come on, guys. Like, there's yeah, They spent, like, the best weather day, like, moving their camp. It's closer not to you guys. <laughs> right He's like, do you Next think they came us. over here and didn't see? I'm like, that's impossible. Like, they literally had to walk from that valley where you can see it's a razor, a big tent, and a tarp up. Like, you can't miss that. Oh, man. No. Did you talk like to a- him? No. Mm-mm. No. I was no. like, nah. I was like, we'll just get up earlier than them. Yeah. That's and a we'll good walk way. through their camp and be like, early bird gets the worm, boys. <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of. I mean, we didn't walk through we their camp. We walked right by them. Well, he, we, he got up really early that morning, and he was going to, like... It was excited. foggy, so he couldn't really... Well, what I told Chad, you know, full disclosure out of the gate, I was like, so, I'm just going to let you know, I take for fucking ever to get ready, okay? Like, so my morning is like, I got to get my coffee, I got to get my, you know, my business in, I got to get my gear ready, and he's up, like, bam, instant ready. Like, he's the dude that's insta ready, and I'm like, God, I wish I could be that guy man i don't know if i can ever be that guy so he was gonna kind of like kind of get me going and like not rush me but get me out and then he's like watching these guys and they're like walking around their camp and glassing but they're not no packs no rifles no nothing i'm like are they just fucking camping one dude was getting water other dudes like going off to use the bathroom i was like what are they doing but they had like super nice like backpacking tents so yeah, I and camo, they had to camo it up. Yeah, yeah, they had to be in sheep hunting. I don't. But think I never saw them with a gun, and I saw we saw them with spotting scopes. So I know yeah. they were hunting. Yeah. Never saw a rifle on never a back. Never saw a backpack. Nothing. Never saw nothing. No, you're just learning. It they're could be. It out. Could, I mean, they were they were old. They look like older guys though. I don't know if they're <laughs> like. Maybe, maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're looking Love for the guys. easy one that comes down to camp. So that's I think really ultimately what they were because so when we came down, those two young rams were still on that on that slope and so when we came down i was like well there's really no reason to like come down here all super sneaky and like not that we were like oh blow them out we'll just walk down if the rams run off they run off yeah sure enough like we started walking down they saw us they 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 ran off and i'm pretty sure those guys were down there watching those and they may have actually been drawn to that valley because they couldn't see our camp initially but if they had really good scope, they could see those rams on that mountainside that we mm. saw. So that might have drawn them down from their upper camp to that yeah. valley. And I think they got down there and they were like, fuck, there's a razor down there with a freaking Cabela's Guide 4. Yeah, but they already got their camp, so they just set it up. Yeah, yeah. and they found Did a they spot. they move the next day? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they blew out of there. So we, we rolled up and um, that's when we went up in that upper bowl. And... Uh, found the ram that we ended up taking and uh but we watched them all that day but uh we were kind of screwed weather kept coming in and out and then 
we weren't really sure. So Chad finally like made the call. We we're going to move closer and we got really good glass on him. And Chad's got a really cool rule. And I wouldn't be surprised if you had this rule, Jack, cause you're an awesome sheep hunter too. But no, he, he's like three, four o'clock. You pull out. And I'm like, damn, bro, we don't like usually get started until like noon, dog. Like, <laughs> crack a noon or We crack actually noon. kind of ran into that a little bit on our trip. But, but, yeah. but no, well, the, if you go far, I mean, if you're three and a half, I mean, as the crow flies, we were three and a half miles from camp. Yeah. Where we got that sheep. And that's like, as the crow flies straight line, which is not how you can approach it, we had to go yeah. up valley, 2,000 feet, go up this ramp. Then, go this whole ridge to get to this whole ridge yeah and then all that elevation gain and loss mm -hmm. so like you gotta add all that in and it's just like i knew that was six hour pack out and yeah. so like three o'clock yeah. shoot it can take you a while to break it down especially your deboning trying to find your tent there's always tomorrow ramp is not a fun deal no, no. It sucks. yeah and so then when we got when we f did get to that ramp Cause we got, we got held by that. Like we said earlier, the fog. So we were like mm -hmm. curled up in freaking tarps, like napping basically. Yeah. And we're both just like cocooned in these tarps laying there in the rain and snow and fog. And finally the fog blew out and we, and we still couldn't find the ram. No. And then you were like, dude, I think it's on that furthest bench. And I was like, great. And yeah, we got sure like a enough, five minute him. window, dude. Like yeah. the fog cleared up and we had like the sun beam down and kind of like burned it off for a second. But there was this other fog bank that was like rolling out of the valley. Yeah. And we glassed and it was just like, oh, I think it's right there. there and Chad, Chad gets his 12 powers on there. He's like, fuck yeah. As soon as that fog went, we geared up and it was like, Bing! we went. And But it was like 1245 by that time. And we got up there at like nine. So we were up there forever waiting mm -hmm. and waiting yeah. and waiting yeah. and waiting. And we took, it took us two hours and like 30 minutes, I think, to get around to where we finally, you know, Chad kind of was like, I was thinking we had to go further. And then he kind of stopped instantly and was like, yo, that ramp could be like anywhere. He said, remember, you got a barrel over your head. And I'm like, okay, well, I won't do the first peak. You do the first kind of like glance over, right? And right there, man, he like glanced over and was like, bam, there he is. It was like, oh shit, we're already here? I, was th I thought we had like another... 30, yeah. 45 minutes to go, but the, no, but then I guess I mean, we got there at two thirty. Yep, yep. And then I think we and you're above him at this point, or mm -hmm. yeah, we're above him. Like we're on, like this ridge line ends and it like splits into a Y. Yeah, and it goes down and it's like ending and it's descending into this big glacier valley. Yeah, that goes down to the Chickaloon River, and so it's like the end of the ridge, and so it's like stepping down and there's like a bunch of like four perch big perches uh -huh. and he's on the lowest one uh, okay naturally. like goat country kind of yeah but they're like big they're big mm, grassy grassy on top of like low perfectly yeah. flat like perfectly mm -hmm. nice yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and we we're on smaller ones above him and, and how high are you above you above uh, above him are you it was a pretty downhill shot like uh, it was Didn't look as far until we got down it was 235 yards um like straight yeah. and then my angle compensation was making it like 180 yeah yeah mm -hmm. and it was like kind of like in the had like shoots on the side that would be shaley so you couldn't have like a silent approach with the bow type thing oh um, that was a I thing man get, there was Tell one about that. there was like one more um perch there was one more like hide that i could get behind that uh -huh. i could probably get to yeah but it was gonna be loud yeah and it was gonna be slow yeah and even with that, like I was ranging the sheep and then I was ranging that and I was like subtracting it. And I was like, that's going to put me at 80 yards, but it's still so steep. Yeah. That that's going to like make my shot like 65 with yeah, the bow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's doable if he stands up, but yeah. like bedded down, that's probably irresponsible of me. Yeah. And totally. I was like, at that point, I was like, it's going to take me at least an hour to get there. Yeah. So I'm going to be like crawling in the yeah. whites, probably like have to all be in whites. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, and then I'm going to shoot a sheep with a bow that ain't dying fast. Like he's going to run hopefully way uphill. Yeah. To the top toward, maybe. Toward, right. toward me. Yeah. <laughs> but who knows what they, what he's going to do, but he's right. got a hemorrhage out. That's going to take a while. Yeah. I was like, you're going to have to take him with the rifle. Yeah. Or we can't do this today. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, 
all right, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, hundred percent. He's like, you would shoot that. I'm like, damn straight. I would shoot that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice Ram. And so yeah. sitting in here right now, I was like, yeah. dude, you have all the time in the world. Like just get perfectly comfortable and set up. And then I'll try and get him to stand up. So we sat there. He got, he was like jockeying around. He was like, oh, I can't find a comfortable spot. And he finally got comfortable. He's like, all right, I'm super steady. And I was like, okay. He's like, I'm sighted in at 200. I'm like, hold dead on. He's like, I was like, let me try and get him to stand up. And I have like, it's like the first time I bought like a phone scope. This is the first time I've ever used it. So I'm like recording. And I had to keep telling him, get that thing out, bro. Get it out. I'm recording. I'm recording. Like <laughs> zoomed it. Like it's perfect footage, right? And I like throw a rock, try and get it to stand up. He like barely moves his head. I'm like, man, this dude. Is like living the dream out here. He's like, <laughs> nothing can touch me. He's like, doesn't care about nothing. He doesn't stand up. So I like, I'm not a filmer. I pause the thing. And so I'm like, throw another rock. Doesn't stand up. I'm like, you're just going to have to shoot embedded. I was like, are you comfortable with that? He's like, where should I shoot him? Through his shoulder? I was like, nah, it's going to destroy that whole front quarter. I was like, imagine that he has a collarbone. And I was like, top of that shoulder where his like neck crease is i was like can you pinpoint that i was like you said you're zeroed at 200 like just do it he's like all right i can do that man i never started the video again so uh, we don't, i don't have no, no video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. worse <laughs> they got him right there did he just fall over yeah he just his uh, head just, just like wow he's just like i'm just sitting there ears plugged think i'm recording the whole well, time and i said to him i was like hey are you ready I had my ears and he didn't say I anything. I was like, well, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm on. I'm like yeah. ready now. I'm like, yeah. staring at my scope like this. So I didn't hear anything he said. And he's just like, and then he like looks at me and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, boom. And I just like barely hear it. And I just see his like head just fall on his lap. Didn't move an inch. And I was yeah. like, yes, good shot. Yeah, that was awesome. He was like <laughs> Doned him. Oh man, you were you were more pumped about the shot than I was. Like, dude, because well, let me, can't let me go any better. Like that dude never oh, had yeah. a dark thought in his yeah. mind. No, no, he, he never thought anything. Like no emotions ran through that sheep yeah. at all. He's just sleeping and then done. It's the best yeah. way to Chill. go. Yeah. Well, and and like what what I didn't tell you, Chad, and I told Daniel, and I told one of my other buddies is like. When I was like all the whole time, like, all right, man, like canceling every option out so he could get down with the bow. And inside, I'm like, I'd love to shoot a ram, but like, it'd be really, really cool to watch this dude kill him with a bow. I've like never seen anything like it and I wanted to see it. And then he was like, we scenarioed it and da 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 da. And he's like, finally, like, nah, man, I can't get it. It's too late. We don't have enough time. You set up. And I was just like, all right. But inside, I was like a giddy schoolgirl, dude. I was like, oh, my God, I get to shoot a rat. So I was like, knew I was going to go over and get my pack out of my, my gun out of my pack. But, you know, in front of you, I was like, all right, cool. So I go over and get it just <laughs> <laughs> like I was just like, cool. It's just like, yeah, no problem. Man. I'll go get my rat. I said, I'm man, I'm not greedy. Up. And I'm like, <laughs> I really like sheep meat. And there's no reason for me to like, like push get some meat. to do this with a bow and then risk blowing it out and then we have nothing. Yeah. 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 When we had another like option, it's not, it's right? not, yeah, it's yeah, not totally, you gotta totally. do you have to just yeah. you gotta make the better decision. Like yeah. what's the higher probability? That's what we gotta go with. Yeah, and I I mean I was like, like I would I'm love I would love whatever. to say the first big game animal I've shot in my life was a sheep. Like, I pretty much just throw my bow away after that. Yeah. Like, just drop the mic. I just yeah, hang I'm it up good. next to the sheep and be like, yeah, I've only shot one animal with a bow. That one. <laughs> yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. Now the bow's sitting next to my yoga mat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, but yeah, he was so, like, stoked. Like, I pulled the trigger, bam, and it was like, you know when you hear the thwap? Yeah. It was like the loudest thwap. I was like, dang, you usually hear a really loud thwap with a moose because you're shooting the side of a barn door. It was like, whap, and you just hear, like, roll through the moose. Yeah. Hits this thing and it's just like, dink, and his head just drops. So I'm like, oh man, good clean kill. And he's like, you fucking stoned him. He's like, <laughs> and he's like, so he's happy. been so cool and chill like all this time. And he was just like, so like emotional and like, you know, exhilarating. And I'm just like, I look at him and I'm just like, 
like I was, I was all good and calm the whole time until so, after that was the, the best part. Pull, that was, I was the just best like, part to me though, because oh, that's man. exactly how it should go. You were like, dude, I don't know if I've ever been that calm in the whole process, and now I like can't stop shaking that it's over. And uh, he's like, look at me. <laughs> and I was, but like, it was all dude, like, but you were calm in the moment heart, where you heart needed rate to be. was just down. I was just like cool it's like no big deal and then like bam and i was <laughs> like so pumped well his energy like i was already like you know you know i get that adrenaline rush and then you get like a crash and it's like this weird roller coaster of shit like when we killed our sheep together we were like hugging and being all silly and yeah and then he was just like ah, and i'm like ding like he was just it was just such a cool moment and then we went down there and I get down to the ram and I look up and I'm like, holy shit, dude, that's like a five story building. It was way like vertical. Like it didn't seem like mm -hmm. that bad when we shot down. Yeah. And the first thing we get down and we're like, well, now the work starts. That's and then right. we're like, fuck, dude, this pull out of this one spot's going to suck. Well, that and the so fact that bad. the second your gun rang off, it just starts raining. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh geez, like, cool. Yeah, right on. <laughs> like, cool. that's awesome. Yeah. We like skin half of it out and then it's like switches to snow. It's like, oh, okay. So the whole time we're like cleaning the sheep, I kind of just keep glancing back at the route out and I'm like, oh, I gotta go oh. up this thing. Well, it's not that. It's just like socked, socked in. Oh, yeah. Snowing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I sure hope we get back to those beers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Parking at the razor is nice. Oh, man. And then I, I like, I, we got up to the top and or close to the top and we're loaded down now we get up we peel all of our ring gear off we're not going to hike in our ring gear because you already knew you were going to be so hot and sweaty yeah. like i'd rather just like get just, fucking yeah. wet from the you're gonna get elements wet inside your yeah you're wet yeah. anyway yeah. yeah so i was like i don't even want to wear my ring gear i mean get up there and he's like he's taking probably his like first big break kind of pulling us up out of there and I was like, Chad, man, this beer's going to be real good tonight. And he's like, yeah, if we make it to him. And I'm like, we'll make it to him. <laughs> I was like, well, let's get to the top and reevaluate. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, no, no. We're getting out of here. Yeah. He's like, 7,000 feet, puffies or not, tarps or not. We don't want to sleep yeah. up here. And it's like, that snow had no sign of like stopping. Yeah. So I was like, we don't want to wake up tomorrow or try to sleep. Wake up to snow on the track. Yeah, and then yeah. try to get it. I was like, nah. So we ended up pushing out. And it did kind of like blow through and kind of. It, it was, was in fine. and out. We yeah. were wet. And then fog came. And then fog came in like as we were going down. So now you can't see camp. So it's just like yeah. great. And then, then we wound up having to find camp on GPS. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are we're you the pace keeper away. on your normal trips? Uh, Not uphill. Downhill, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. With my boy Nate, he uphill, he's yeah but i always that dude he's that dude that like he <laughs> tell almost tell him he about enjoy, this he enjoys like suffering like, yeah too much. to the max yeah like i embrace the suck and i live by that slogan but he like he like wants he like go will go the heart like i was telling him i was like dude i'm like the contour yep dude. yep mm -hmm. yep and he's like i like it. yeah <laughs> no that's my dad that's who i grew up with is the and billy goat dude and he's fat but downhill Sucks. i'll eat his ass for lunch yeah yeah. yeah, I always wondered like how that would work, like if you like, because you know this is the first year I went shooting with Daniel, and I'm the pacekeeper in the group unless I have my dad. Mm -hmm. But like, what happens if you went without the pacekeeper? Like, who, how's that go down? Then you do like those dudes who camp 300 yards from us, yeah, and you, like, say, hey, you camp <laughs> <out."> <laughs> <laughs> and you just glass till you see something, and then you got to decide which one of you is gonna lead. Yeah, to it. it's like who, who does this now? Yeah. yeah, no, it's like yeah, I don't know. Um, Nate definitely like uphill is yeah. He's that guy that'll just like he's not, a billy goat. Yeah, he won't say a word. Yeah, he'll just like be quiet and he's yeah. just gone. Yeah, and I try to keep up with him. Yep, and I can't. Yep. Yeah, I Those like the zigzagging. I like the zigzagging. That's the way I to do it. I followed your track. I was like, dude, he's he's a trail boss, dude. It's just easy. Like Daniel, oftentimes, even with the knee situation, when he's like strong, he's a really good uphill. Not gonna go fast downhill. Yeah, yeah. I'm like 45 minutes ahead of him downhill. But going uphill, different story. Well, Chad was just like, he was a zigzagger. I'm like, oh, my God, thank goodness. Like, I'm. You got a zigzag. That's yeah. The way like, I mean, I don't even know how you go. Like, I can do three or four or five steps straight up. 
but then I got to stop and take a breath. And like, I, I mean, I can't, I mean, well, there's that whole like small steps or, you know, better steps and you can't small step going straight up, but you can small no. step going zigzaggy. Right. right. Well, I've seen Nate, I've seen like Nate, like I know he's, I'm, I know he's pushing himself like so hard mentally. And I know he, he just, that's just who he is. Like, that's just what he does. He's like, he's a hardcore dude. He's an intense person. And he's an amazing person, but I know he pushes himself so hard because I've, I've literally seen him. Like if we eat too soon when we're done, like he'll throw up. Oh yeah. Like he's like so much lactic acid or something built up that it's like, it's still like burning too much and he'll like throw up and be like, fuck. Yeah. Waste a whole meal. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll, so he like, and he knows that about himself now. So like, he'll like, kind of hold he'll like won't eat for, he'll like wait he'll, he'll pace him so yeah. he pace his food yeah yeah that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. no it is but he's an it? animal he's like yeah oh, you different. were talking about him a lot i was like man he's he sounds animal. like your og yeah we've been like super good friends since high school 30 years 30 yeah. plus years guy you can trust in the mountains looks out for you oh absolutely i mean he's a firefighter paramedic like you can't get a better dude in the mountains than that yeah like, no shit literally saved my life <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I can carry your dead body out. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Well, do my best on the injury. I'll do my exactly. best on saving your life. But uh, yeah. So do both of you guys go to school up here or yeah, Diamond. Diamond, all right. What year? Ninety one. Ninety one. You know, I saw it in throw like, the, the age 93. out. Was, you notice I didn't throw the age out? I was just like I don't hey, care, yeah. dude. Well, you know, I'm still in that You're looking point, good, dude. At this point, I'm proud of it. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, yeah, you should, you should be. be. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's leaking oil, bro. That's leaking right. oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we had an amazing trip, man. We got that we got that ram out. We, we got down to the bottom of the hill. It was like like ten ish, and it was fogged in. And like we're like, where the fuck is the tent? We're both like pissed at this point. You know, my ankles are rubber. His knees are clapped. Like we're t- we're tired. Like it is like we're over it. Like, yeah, I'm like mad. Yeah, he's I'm, trying in the, to, I'm in that like silent <clears throat> mad. Oh yeah. And he's like the most positive person like I've ever been around. <laughs> like he's like, man, I just want to tell you you're doing a great job. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like borderline Keep like don't us. talk to me. Yeah. Yeah, I could tell at the end it was like <laughs> I, was, I don't want to hear that again. I was like, well, I mean, I could just feel the well, I could feel the switch going on. I'm trying to like, <laughs> dude, I was on. having like flashbacks of that toe comp that <laughs> yeah, I did where yeah, like yeah. where my I like. My headlamp went dead, and I couldn't mm-hmm. find my camp. Like, I didn't have a light. Yeah. Now I have this little e-light. Like, that was, like, new to the kit next year. Like, in my binocular bag, I have this, like, Petzl, this out, this Daniel, Petzl this e-light thing. that runs on, like, those little CR32 yep. batteries yep. Like, for your FOP. And it'll run for a long time. It's, like, one little LED. but And it's tiny. It comes in a little case, like, this big. Just fits wherever. Yeah. Because I ran, my light ran out, and dude, like, I was like, S- thank God I had marked my cam. On your on, reach? Yeah, on my, um, on my, this app, like, my GPS app. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, at Onyx Hunt or whatever. And, uh, like, I had to use it and zoom, like, all the way in to, yeah, like, yeah. five feet. And yeah. literally stump, tripped over my guy lines. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so smart get that tan hilleberg like that was brilliant instead of the red one <laughs> yeah. were you by yourself <laughs> yeah oh yeah. Yeah. Solo. yeah and i was like literally like in the pitch black yeah. no like trying to use the light on my phone yeah. and i yeah. that thing is bright when it's in your eye it is not bright in the great outdoors yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't do <laughs> shit yeah. you might as well have a lighter <laughs> like you might as well have a lighter. yeah and i was like so i was like i don't have a flashback of that. i was like dude this can't happen twice. Like yeah. you can't like first mistake. It's like, all right, lesson learned. Now here you are again, literally on your phone. And I couldn't, and it's my fault too. Like I couldn't figure out how to get my on X to like, tell me which direction I'm facing. Yeah. And yeah. so like I had to zoom in and then we'd have to walk like 20 feet. Yeah. So it was like, and I'd have yeah, to put the tracking uh, feature to see like, which way we were tracking. Mm-hmm. Right. Cellular tower stuff, triangulation. Yeah. And then when you, mm-hmm. the more you zoom in, the like glitchier it yeah. is. Yeah. So like, I was like, we were, we'd start walking and he'd be, and he's like on his GPS, like his in trying to find yeah. it. And he's like, 
fuck it's the other way and i was like getting so mad at that point because yeah. i just wanted my boots off like yeah oh, we we're yeah. underway yeah, yeah, yeah. soaking wet i was like god i just want to like find this tent so i can take yeah. this pack off you couldn't yeah. just follow your injury tracks because you can oh. zoom in within like three well i feet. never i didn't do a track but i had a pinpoint on our camp oh well i wasn't worried about it because like you know all the land features and everything was good and but it's not good when you get to the bottom and all the roly-poly hills in the fog and it's getting dark, look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. So then I reverted to my inReach, yeah. my, where, where camp was, and I was like, dude, we're only 500 feet away. Like, you can't be that far. Yeah, yeah. So I started walking this way, and I'm like, God damn it, wrong way. Well, we walking went, this we way. We went 1,500 feet to get to that 500 feet. Yeah, yes, yeah, we yeah. did. Because we just kept going this wrong direction. Now, I, was like, I don't know <laughs> if this is an inReach thing, but, like, my inReach um, direction kept screwing up because I'm thinking the fog was screwing up the satellite like it kept flashing the question mark and then it would like catch back on and i'm like okay mm. i'm good and then it would flash the question mark. are you looking on your phone no i had actually at this point i'm i pull it on my gps yeah, yeah, like yeah. i'm not i'm not messing around like i actually got the inreach off my mm -hmm. bino harness yeah and i'm looking at it and it just kept like patching in and out but dude the it was so thick like you could only see like 50 yards yeah, in front of you right. it was like the like the fog was like like in there so i'm yeah. like man is it screwing up the the satellite yeah you know signal a little bit because it was like in and out in and out in and out and we ended up finding it but it was it yeah. was brutal but yeah it was funny because i was like we'll be good chad it's, i think it's over here and you're just like oh, damn it <laughs> so <laughs> a little yeah. bit about that inreach that is amazing and you know, these guys have heard this before but come so coming out of a goat hunt um my buddy and I, we both carried those in reaches and we went up a bear trail and this valley was unpenetrable if you were on this bear trail. Do you have the, like, or do you have the one that has the GPS on it or are you the one like you're the mini where you're using that? No, app? no, it has it on it, but I use the app. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But you need to wait for the app to catch up, you know? Um, like if, if you're using your phone GPS, you need to wait like that extra 20 seconds to watch for oh. the like, north arrow to move right oh. in the right direction because it is Bluetoothing to it. Um, or at least that's what we found. But so we're in this, we're co coming out with a goat, super heavy, long pack out through this like bear valley, basically. And it's like unpenetrable. It'd be like walking down from flat top, you know, just through alders and shit. Yeah. But yeah. the trail yeah, no. totally money, you know, it's not real established, but enough. The you game trail. Through. Yeah. yeah. Great game trail. And we get off of it cause it's dark and, um, you know, we're like, where the fuck is this thing? And you're at, we were able to zoom in and be like, it is 12 feet that way. And like literally like four big steps, you're on the game trail. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, so that worked so good that, that later that year when we were in Kodiak, um, my brother and I found a path up, you know, how Kodiak can be, especially that North side of the Island where it's just like altered out all kinds of brush and you have to follow that bear trail we we were able to follow within like three feet you would see like i had my app open the whole time down the hill and i'd be like oh we veered off it by four feet and then we'd go back and reestablish the trail so, so something yeah. to like so it's dialed so, so that, was, yeah. that was probably track. my mistake is i wasn't mm -hmm. using the, i wasn't using the garmin in reach app i was using the on x because that is what i marked camp on and uh, i'm gonna right. start mm -hmm. using the garmin for that and you don't even have to mark camp then you just start your tracking yeah and then no matter mm -hmm. where you walked you can walk exactly on that line just Back keep zooming in i need to start doing that a little better well the tracking will burn up it's just when you're sheep hunting you you always just don't think like you need to track because you can like you're, you can see you can see yeah, you're like yeah. alpines yeah. you can see everything there's not brush or thick no. or whatever and then till you get fog yeah like, or you're right? trying you're yeah. coming in out in the dark but um, that was a learning curve with the fog and the borderline dark. I was like, oh, okay. Like, this is where it's very fucking important to track. Even if it was just tracking to the top of the mountain. Yeah. And then stopping the tracking. Yeah. So at least Save when you got to there. Whatever. Yeah. Because I do notice it eats your battery when well, you're tracking. So there's the two different types of tracking. There's the tracking that you're doing on your phone. And then there's the tracking that you're sending out. And I'm talking mm. about the tracking that you're doing on the GPS. Yeah. So, so it's like, if you're not, if you're tracking... And you're not sending out stuff every five minutes. It's not eating any battery. Okay. Because all it is is tracking where you're going. Yeah. Just staying on your. It's not trail. like constantly sending out those like every ten minute yeah, intervals yeah, yeah. to people. Okay. You know? mm. So maybe that's what it was. I had it set 
to send the interval, and that's why it's tuna. Because I last time I used tracking, it was like, damn, man. Like when we went to the Brooks, remember we did we took the wrong valley and we had to go up and over. Well, I tracked all that. By the time we got through the second day, my cheap my Garmin was almost dead. Yeah. So I was like, damn. I tracked our whole hunt, and I think I charged it one time. Really? Same. I tracked the whole thing too, no. but I wasn't sending the track to anyone. I was you just, were just tracking. I was just tracking, tracking to have it. So that's mm. I was just sending it out. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. But yeah. I have my interval set at two hours. Okay, so that for this seems trip. more realistic, right? But so yeah. that's the interval it's sending it out, but it's tracking every step mm-hmm. I've taken. Yeah, yeah, it's actually like making a breadcrumb trail all the way to wherever you're going. Right. Yeah, I, you know, the whole time when we went out, I didn't think we needed to do that. I know no. we went up here, left over here. And yeah, you don't need down. it until you need it, right? Yeah, that's yeah right. exactly. You don't know yeah. what's going to happen later that night. Yep. Yeah. We didn't know that we were going to need to use it to get out of Bear Trail. Yeah. And we were making, like, we would have been fine on time. Like, we were going to make it light, no problem. It's mm-hmm. just like we literally got, like, halfway down the hill, and all of a sudden, like, there was no fog up top. And then all of a sudden, it was, like, fog just on the deck. The fog truck, man. And I was like, mm. oh, man. Yeah, I was like, really? Like now? Right at the fucking end. Now, right at the end. So when you pick this, like I'm miserable. And now you're gonna do this. <laughs> so how much better did those beers taste? They're pretty oh, good. Oh man, dude. what did you have? Good. We had high, high lives, lives, dude. Oh, Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dan, right. Daniel's favorite yeah. Guinness. What? Well, <laughs> we were supposed to crush. So he had eight beers, and so we had like a beer each night for two nights. And then we were like, cool, now we got four beers. Awesome. We can have like two each. We like crush one, fire up a bowl. We're like, done. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> the second beer was like, nah. So it was made for, you know. I like a bowl of ramen. A bowl of ramen. Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm going to crush one of those peaks. Nope. Just going to bed. Yeah. So done. Yeah. I was just the like, are you full? Yeah. Yeah. What's those your favorite one of those? Those are the legitest, legitest of all of them. All of them. All of them. Pete Greefuel. I, I think I like the pesto pasta one a lot. Mm. Yeah. But I haven't mm-hmm. had the chicken teriyaki yet. Okay. That's what I was How about you, Brenda? Um, for breakfast, I love that strawberry granola. That's a good one. Oh, I haven't that tried good. that one yet. That was good. Oh, my God. Dude, that's was good. bomb. It's got, like, strawberry dehydrated strawberry, like, Looks slivers awesome. in it. Do you do it with hot or cold? Hot. Hot, hot yeah. Hot yeah. Hot. Oh, I do. Everything's hot. I yeah. eat no, nothing cold. Out in the cold elements. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, I want yeah. hot yeah. stuff going in my tea, coffee, you know, cold beer. That's one I thing. Think I think you've got a consensus on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is a good brand, though. It is. Stuff is not you know, like. what? it's like really not fancy at all, <clears throat> but the stroganoff is bomb. I had that. Yeah, and I'm we not tried a, that. I'm not a white sauce guy. It was awesome. It's it was good. Awesome. Well, there's, there's it's really creamy. It's good. Yeah. There's a couple of things. Obviously, it tastes good. The yeah. calorie numbers are insane. Yeah. The water you use is like half of everything How's else. How is that possible? And That's the time awesome. you have to wait for it to rehydrate is minimal, too. Yeah. Yeah. They've got it dialed. Yeah. Like whatever everybody started doing that took so long and calorie, like yeah. they were able to maximize everything. And minimize water and time. Oh, totally. It was like 150 like, calories per ounce on all your peak refuels, Daniel. And I had the beef stroganoff from Mountain House the night before and then had yours, and it was so much more flavorful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was really good. Much. I was like f- so full at the end yeah. of that. I was like, I can't even. And I had the thing. pesto that one night. We we finally had one, and that was really good too, man. Good. I was like, wow, that is it's one good. I haven't had. Have you had any of the the... The Chad Mendez ones? I have not. So I didn't know he was doing it. I know he's like a big hunter, but I didn't know he was making yeah, he, his own. No, he like linked up with them and he has like his own like four. Oh, like with his them. flavors. Oh, his, his, his like stuff, but it's all like. Um, Does like, anyone have them up here? His? I haven't seen it yet. No full curls carrying them. Yeah. And but he, he like incorporated beans. some game into them. Like he has what? like a elk ragu spaghetti Ooh, and then right. like a. Wasn't one called Doll something? Yeah, he has. Yeah, you should look it up real quick. Actually, mm-hmm. it's with an S. Not as it'll, it'll find it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bison elk. There it is. Elk ragu pasta. Go to that yeah. one. Bison, bison ranch, ranch mashes. mashes. Ooh, I like that. Beef strogi. Uh, That's not his. This venison one. Venison, venison casserole. Those seem legit. 
Yeah, they got a lot of. My favorite is that sweet pork and rice. Oh, I haven't had that. Dude, that one is so bomb. So it sounds good. like he's got at least the three. I was telling him another oh, move. So like if you're, if you're even looking for more calories, like if you bring like sticks of butter, mm. and you just put like half a stick of butter in those, or Idaho, a pack of Idahoans. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was telling Daniel I like to bring an extra block of cheese, and every one I make, I throw a piece of that cheese yeah, in there. Yeah, that works good too. So it looks like Chad's all bison, elk, and and venison is what his. I think that's all you could do because you can't legally sell game, right? Yeah. But those yeah. are oh, like, yeah. you, can. you can ranch all that. Mm, it's got carrots and. I mean, every one I've had has been delicious. Yeah, I haven't had one I didn't like. Um, and they're super high calorie and super high protein. Yeah, look at that 40 grams awesome. of protein. Like, And that's like a lower one. A lot of them are like 50s. Yeah. And that's per oh per pouch, not per serving because two servings. But right, they were still like a hundred and fifty calories per ounce, which is pretty damn good. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. dense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they like got down on those mountain houses and were like, "Yeah, we need to step our game up." They definitely set the bar high now. Yeah. The- oh man, big time! <clears throat> Everyone yeah. else got to step it up. I do like some mountain houses, but I think these other ones are probably there's, there's better. There's just a couple. Yeah. Well, now that you've tried some of these other ones, the mountain houses is like, oh, there's a lot better ones out there? I think it's more that, like, we ate a lot of mountain houses when it was, like, seven packages earlier, and they've gotten <laughs> right. so much better that I'm like, oh, I have respect for you because I don't get, like, the spaghetti farts anymore or, you know, like, <laughs> this other thing that I can't even describe. <laughs> They're still like a good old just, fashioned MRE every now and then. Oh, right? yeah, there you go. Yeah, I have one, man. I haven't tried it yet, though. Just don't ever eat the Jamaican pork chop. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. That doesn't sound Switch right. If someone gives you that MRE, just like get rid of it. Now, are they still making MREs? Are <laughs> these all the ones that were made like in no, the 70s? No, no. no. Those still? are C rations. Oh, that's, that's right. That's before okay. MREs. All right, yeah. C rations. I yeah. forgot about those. I have an MRE, like a like a new one, and it, but it's big and bulky. Like I don't. Oh know yeah, that. they're super. They're not light. Yeah, but they're like got seven thousand stuff. calories. <laughs> like they're dense. Everything in them is dense. So if you only need to eat like, like the once brownie, every three days? it's like lit. It feels heavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the but coolest thing of those good. is a, a little bit of water that you have to put in, like a tiny bit, and it just gets like yeah. yeah heat so and he heats it itself. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's money. Yeah, it's got like a heat pack. And like you get a little like a, Tabasco thing. Yeah, no, like my, Skittles or something. Which my Army <laughs> Ranger buddies told me that is not for flavoring your food. That is specifically to save for sleep deprivation training. <laughs> Whenever you're going to fall asleep, you just put a little of that in your eye. Ah, oh, you oh go. my God, dude. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I'll use mine on the meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will keep you awake. Oh, yeah. Definitely a different. It's like pulling style. nose hairs out when you're falling asleep driving. Some of the stories those guys <laughs> have. Come, yeah, come <laughs> these out. Wake up. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for sharing uh, the story, man. Uh, Sounds we had a good really time, good, man. man. Really it was a great trip. time. It was awesome. We, uh, if you want to check out some of the pictures, it's it's going to be once again on uh, Chad's um, Instagram, mtn.div, mountain.div, and then Brando underscore AWP as well. Um, I don't know if there's enough to make a little video. We're going to try and see what you guys got and see if we yeah, can put no, together. I, I, I can. Yeah, yeah, I got enough. Okay, Something so we're going to try to put sweet. down a little short, sweet little video, kind of mm-hmm. give people a little a view of it. Is that and going on Patreon or is that? The, ooh. That might be a good Patreon that video. Might be a good I Patreon. wouldn't be opposed to that at all. That might be a good yeah. Patreon, yeah. Yeah, first little... R- little little tryout of them. Yeah, shout out to the Patreons, for all the Patreon dude. Guys. Yeah, man, the Wesley, Patreons are coming Michael, in, dude. Everyone, yeah, coming yeah. In. yeah, Patreons are coming. Dude, Wes out, came dude. through with a Patreon, dude. Yeah, what's Patreon? What am I? I'm I'm lost here. Pa- Patreon, Patreon is uh, a way to support um, the podcast, so you can donate like a certain amount a month or like oh. a flat whatever. And so anyone that's on our Patreon is going to get. Um, content that we're not putting out for anywhere else oh that's dope mm-hmm. so like we have some podcasts that we recorded that are only going to go out on that um shout we, out to An- annie nangas she's, yep, annie. she's gonna be, she's probably first be the first one, one. Like, um and, and little baby. things like that like little videos and stuff like that and and that will go out on there and maybe some yeah, like that's d- rad. Wes was stoked he was like he was driving to valdez he drove to valdez for work and so he saw my truck and he didn't really, like, I kind of told him that I was like, 
trying to figure something out because he knew like Aaron he, he had called me to like wish me good luck and I was like dude it blow up like I got some calls out I'm trying to figure this out and he so he saw my truck park there and then he uh when he, he said he was like listening to the podcast like his whole drive to Valdez and his whole drive back and then so he like left him a note on my truck yeah that looked yeah, cool I sent oh, you man. guys that yeah, man yeah. I was like dude that was so thoughtful it was uh, and cool. then so he started following me on Instagram like today or yesterday and so I messaged him I'm like bro thank you so much for that note dude like that was before any of my like day one homies that's West. Like, said, congratulations. West got a big heart. This West dude wrote like a handwritten note on his windshield. I'm like, bro, that was like, thank you, man. That like really yeah. touched me, dude. I was like, yeah. that is badass. That's he West, was. Dude. He doesn't really know me, and he was so happy for me. Like, and I went out with his homie, and like, I was like, damn, that that's dudes that like love this shit. Oh, Wes. Right yeah, here, Wes. He's got some good recipes. Remember you brought those sliders? Yeah, dude. No, he's he cool, man. Really I, I love that dirty rice, man. dude. Yeah. yeah. He has smoked salmon recipe that will knock your eyes out, man. Dude, he yeah. won. He won the freaking world championship smoked salmon thing at, at Run for, Runners. At Run Runners? He won like for, 20 grand. Wow. Really? Worth the stuff, yeah. Wow. Hell yeah. He's got that. Yeah, he likes some reds, man. He smokes reds. Is that I have smoke? his smoked salmon in the fridge right now. Oh, Wes's? That's that's oh, is that what that is? That's, that's, pack? that's Wes's. Yeah, he smokes it at uh, John's. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, you were saying you guys brine it and then yeah, give it Wes to Yeah, Wes and I brine it. It's Wes's recipe, so when I say Wes and I, uh, if yeah. I'm doing my salmon, I use Wes, and we <laughs> brine it together. He pretty much you does that. I take my salmon brine. to his house. <laughs> we throw it in a garbage bag in a cooler with his brine, and then he takes it to John Wagner, who smokes it. Nice. And it's yeah. money. It's the best. Like, well, I went to John's to drop that sheep off, and... I was like, yeah, I went out with uh, with Chad. He's like, yeah, he just dropped off a bunch of fish. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> confusing me. And what, you know, yeah. okay. He has That's a bunch funny. of fish, too. He was offering me up. Yeah, he, they were killing it on his new cabin out there. Oh, he got a cabin? Yeah, right in yeah. the middle there. In West the did, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Wes and yeah. Like, his wife's like best friend. Nice. Yeah. I'm stoked for him. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Nobody loves like fishing and like, I love going to the Russian with Wes. Like, we used to mountain bike in. When he was, like, working, and we were both working construction jobs, and, like, the only fishing we got to do was, like, midnight runs to the yeah, Russian. Suicide, suicide runs, yeah. Up, yeah. Yeah, so we just, like, mountain bike in to the falls and just, like, murder it. Mm -hmm. And Wes is just, like, he loves it. Yeah, that's what Talking like. shit the whole time. Like, you better hurry up. I'm catching yours. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like standing in the middle of the river with like fish tied to him. I, I got video of him like there's like a bear meeting in the middle like to grab his fish. And I'm like, Wes, dude, just get on the side of the river. And he's like, nope. No. But goes over there, grabs his fish. All these tourists are like, oh, my God. My fish. <laughs> yeah, it was about it. Bad, dude. Yeah, no, I was, like, so appreciative of that note. I thought that was the coolest thing. And, it was cool. You know, which I was like, man, he hasn't got a Ram yet, and he wants one. And I'm like, man, that's a dude that deserves it. You know, like, he's congratulating other people and, like, happy for them. And, you know, like, there's always, like, envy and, like, man, I, you know, I, w I wanted it. Like, I, I'm one of the lucky ones this year that, like, got to take one. And I'm, I value that so much. And I know that there's only – so many years and so much time you get in this life where you get to experience really cool shit. And so I really soak up these moments, like what we went through this last week, man. I like will never forget that. It means so much to me. Yeah. They're game changers. And so when someone is like genuinely happy for you, I'm like, man, I I'm rooting for them. Like, you know, I want now I'm like, Wes, I want you to get a sheep. That's right. One day you're going to get one, and I know you're going to be they the happiest it. guy oh, in yeah. the world. And you will say, like I did, and like Daniel did, and I'm sure like all you guys said, I could die today a happy man because I got one. He's you been know? he's been involved you know? on it, so he's like, you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, team yeah. effort. It's like, yeah. oh, 100 yeah. percent, dude. Yeah. You know, so it's like <clears> usually <throat> usually two guys take one, and so Wes has been yeah. part of Wes has been part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just not like 100 percent the shooter or whatever, however you want to classify it. But he's. Yeah. He's been there on a sheep in the brooks. I think they went in the brooks. They flew in. Yeah, and I know he did toke management. 
Wes did, right? Yeah, and he did Toke. So yeah. I guess, so he's been part two. Yep. And they worked their ass off on that. Oh, man. He was like, went so far. That. They went oh, so dude. far from their base camp <clears throat> that it was closer once they got the sheep to just walk. They walked out to the road and hitchhiked to Toke. Oh, wow. <laughs> Put their sheep at 40 mile air and then flew back in to get their camp. <laughs> to get, like, and then flew back into the strip, hiked up to their camp, camped at their camp. Came back out oh. and then got flown back Holy out. Holy shit. Yeah, it was somebody who's just like wrapped up in this tarp. He didn't have like anything. He's just. Uh. Well, I don't know if I remember right. His homie tagged. They had, there was two legals together. And so he, had they partied, yeah. he, he would have got, you know what I mean? Oh. Like they could only take one. They only yeah. had one tag, but yeah. there's two right. yeah. legals together. So yeah. it was like. Let's just put that out there right <laughs> now as the sheep hunting hack. If you're going to put in for the toke tag, party hunt that with someone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because it's the only way to ensure. Because otherwise you're asking someone to go with you on a hunt in toke that they don't get to hunt. Yeah. Sherpa yeah. style. But if you yeah. party it, you double your chances. Yeah. If you want to, you get strong. You both get it. It's like, you want to spend $2,500 and come That's how hike around it. with me and not kill anything? Yeah. yeah. yeah and help fun. carry my meat? Yeah. You can carry <laughs> half my shit, and it's only going to cost you $1,000. <laughs> yeah. I'll get the gas on the drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's why I was alone on mine. Right. Because everyone was like, I don't get to hunt. I'm like, well, I don't know. You probably hunt for something. Yeah. Ground squirrels. <laughs> I was, there's, there's some I was with someone, but he was 61, and I packed his sheep out too. So. <laughs> they could go that way too. Yeah, yeah. you can go with someone. Well, you got to pack them both. Be selective out. on that party. Yeah. 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 Dad was very happy about that. So I bet he was. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He had to earn it. That's great. Well, uh, we're gonna hit you guys with Jack and mine story next week yeah part um, two right part sheep two hunt, on, on the sheep hunt, part two part two yeah um as we uh plan on going on these other moose hunts and you got moose hunts and everyone's man, got leaving to i'm caribou. leaving tomorrow man yeah that's awesome it's, this is it's a turn just the season right now oh. man. we got a few weeks to get after it yeah it's like leave town to go to moose camp to hunt for an antlerless tag maybe two or three nights and then come back to go back out three weeks later yeah so thank you. Sounds like thank Chad you. and I might be out on a caribou hunt this weekend. Yeah. Oh, you're going? I I already told Alexia it's like it's the only we chance have a to go. Come on, get yeah. it, get yeah. it. Yeah. That hunt opens up on yeah. Friday, and if you don't go now, I was yeah, so at two twenty five, two fifty. How many are they? Two twenty five. Two twenty five. I'm three days reporting. So yeah, you leave on Friday, come back on Monday, you're good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was so, just gonna yeah, get I think it's our only shot. Yeah, I think so. So we'll try to get after that before the, the moose season happens and uh Yeah. It'll be good. It's full go, man. It's full, full go. Full go right now. It's you gotta burn go. the gas. That's right. I was just gonna give a shout out to all the hunting widows out there. So uh Definitely. I saw yours today. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're very appreciative of all those uh people that stay behind and let us do this thing. So that's right, man. Yep. Watch the Absolutely. kids take care of the house. Stress out. Stress out. I, I, right. I really appreciate you, you saying that, uh, Jack, because <clears throat> my wife has like been an exceptional trooper thus far. She had a little comment today, but it was just like a little reminder of like how good I have it. Yeah. She wanted to tell me that. And uh I was like, you know, I had to thank her again, you know, as I was like leaving again to come to this podcast tonight. <laughs> He's like, you always got something going on. I'm like, yeah. well, I know, I know. I'll just, but I, I appreciate that because, you know, school starts tomorrow. And yeah. so it's like, now she's got to do logistics for the two kids and then all that. And I don't know, man. I, I'm, I, I, I admittedly take it for granted. I think we all do yeah. at some point. But um, yeah, dude, shout out to them, man. They, they, yeah. I really don't feel like I could, enjoy it as much as I do because I don't know that if you could come home from a long hunt to an empty bed and and no one there would feel the same as you know doing this hard work and coming home. Hell to, no it to, wouldn't. Yeah. Like it just no. like when you come home to a, a, a wife, a girlfriend or kids, I mean it like 
It's just like that warmness to come home to means so much. Yeah. Someone and, that, someone and, and a message then, you that you're okay out there. Someone yeah, like someone it. that gives a shit when you're out there, you know, and like, I don't know. It, it means a lot, and it, it feels good, and um, yeah, like, you know, they, they, they ultimately, they know we're passionate about this life, this lifestyle, and these things that we do, and, um, you know, we're, we're lucky men to have women yeah. in our lives and yeah. family or friends. Yeah. That, and all the that grandpas it, and grandmas all and them, cousins yeah. and yeah. sisters and brothers and uncles yeah. that come over Somebody's and help birthday you out. party you miss or whatever yeah. it is. But she you brought know up I mean? and she said, tomorrow will be the first time you've been dropping your kids off at school for the first on the first day. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I started thinking back. I was like, I've missed every first day of school. Yeah, for the kids because I'm always like on some yeah on a trip, trip sheep mm-hmm. on you know? or yeah, yeah caribou or something yeah it, it yeah. intertwines yeah. so back yeah. to the beginning of the podcast the school district needs to change that damn that's date. right <laughs> that's yeah, it dude. push it back nah, and yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say something in that is like I think that we just need to like start this new like there needs to be like you know how they have the, like the lottery schools we need a lottery school that's like it's like a vocational school slash like arts and like music slash you know how like the kids in girdwood like fridays they get to go Ski they day. go to the resort mm. yeah like there should be like the school with like they go hunting and fishing yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Like, I mean, it's Alaska. Alaska. like we can do it here right yeah. Yeah. yeah so they go like get rabbits or ptarmigan or just hike or like foraging yeah. or like yeah. learn to smoke salmon yeah. 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 yeah we need that yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do need I that. I like that a lot. Dude. The King that. Career Center, that's like, it's not really a career center. It's like how to take it's care life of yourself. Center. Yeah, yeah, how to start a fire, how to put up center. a tent. Yeah. yeah, That's a great idea. Yeah. Come on, Dina. Idea, Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, Dina. <laughs> <Come> on, Dina. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, man. thank you guys. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, patreon.com slash Alaska Wild Project for your donations. It's very helpful for us. Mm-hmm. Um, leave us an Apple Podcast review if you haven't done that yet. Um, check out local greens, get your subscription there, get set up for the winter. So you get that fresh, fresh, good greens for the whole winter. Um, Alaska wild project.com for all the hoodies and the shirts and all that stuff. Um, I think we will be having our stuff soon. I got to go to holler at, um, Kevin. We're, we're going to have a little thing over there at Barney's have all our gear up oh, over there. That's awesome. Pretty soon. Um, we got a lot of new, new merch on the way ordered. Um, it's a delay just as everything else is with COVID and all that stuff. So, yep. but thank you for everyone that's visited the site. Thank you to all the Patreon members already and people that are already tagging us and all their stuff and all the caribou calls and stuff are coming in like crazy. Yeah, that's fun. It's really, 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 yeah. really cool. So thank you for everyone yeah. and thank you for listening and stay wild, Alaska. You remember my speaking to you of what I call your overcautiousness. Are you not overcautious? When you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing? The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, your year-round professional property maintenance company, providing services such as weekly lawn maintenance, driveway sweeping, snow and ice management, and tons more. Get your free estimate today at LawnProAK.com. Anchortown Dogs, located at 4th Avenue across from the old 4th Avenue Theater. Look for the blue and gold umbrella. From reindeer dogs to bomb euros, they've got you covered. Anchortown Dogs, your local gourmet hot dog and sausage cart. Menegados Accounting, locally owned and operated advisory and tax accounting solutions. Passion, experience, diligence. Learn more at menegadosaccounting.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off Arctic and 58th. Handcrafted Alaskan made cider. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Check them out at doubleshovelcider.com. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation. Find their products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce carts, and more at the Treehouse AK and other dispensaries around the state. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. 
to treehouseak.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Your all-in-one cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be high-performing and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women or pregnant or breastfeeding. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. 